before we start, we really need to kind of start by saying doodles don't have to be perfect, okay? It's alright if you want them to be, because I can understand that, totally relate, but in terms of a doodle, when I think of a doodle versus a drawing or an illustration, a doodle just needs to kind of like vaguely represent a thing, okay? We're gonna go into this with that kind of mindset, because at the end of the day, I don't really consider myself the best drawer. Now, like the stuff that I put in my journal, you know, I want it to look nice, I spend the time and effort to make it look good. So I guess that's also another point we should probably talk about is that if you want things to look nice, unless you're like super naturally gifted, talented, which more power to you, things do take time, all right? so. Today we're going to have a look at some easy doodle ideas, ones that hopefully don't take too much time, effort, willpower to actually get down on the page, but still look kind of cute and things that you could put in your journal. All right. Hello. Welcome. It is a pleasure to have you here. I can see that people are joining from all over the place. So that's very exciting. I know that uh, this time in particular, it's like what, 9am my time, isn't necessarily great for some time zones in the world, but I appreciate you guys making it here either live or on the radio play. Now, as we go through, if you do have any kind of requests for doodles, I will do my best. As said, I don't consider myself to be a, like, talented drawer, maybe a pretty okay copier <laughs> in terms of, like, finding doodle inspiration and putting my own spin on it and putting it into my journal, but we're gonna, we're gonna have a go, all right? Uh, in terms of supplies, though, like, if you want to, you know, try these things along with me as we try and find some easy doodle ideas, recommendation is always start with pencil first. You know, a lot of the time that's what I'm gonna do in terms of my doodles in my journal because like I said, I kind of want them to look nice, kind of similarly, like, want to maybe look perfect. I know we're not supposed to strive for perfection, but I always do, so stuff it, All right? Starting with pencil is just a really good way to kind of, like, get over that, like, anxious barrier of putting things into your journal to start with, uh, whether that be, like, positioning of boxes or lettering, or in this case, doodles, but also it means that you can get the shapes right before you commit to pen. Um, Nothing worse than thinking you've got a clear picture in your mind of what you want to draw and then you put it down on page, you're like, oh, well, that, that's certainly something, <laughs> right? We don't want that for us. So do start in pencil first if it makes it easier, especially if you're doing the kind of doodling that requires you to do kind of like basic shapes before you go and put outlines in. I don't know if anybody else can relate, but whenever it came to drawing and your art teacher would be like, okay, well, you draw two circles to indicate these parts of the thing, I'd get like annoyed. I'm like, no, I just want to go with the line work. Just let me put the line work in. But the basic shapes to start with is actually really helpful. So use your pencil first, put in your basic shapes and then go from there. That can be very helpful. Another thing is considering what kind of pen you actually want to put your doodle in with. Now, for me, I personally prefer a lot of my doodles to be done with the Tombow Furunosuke pen because of the brush tip, which seems a little bit odd because you do get varied line consistency with a brush tip. But that's kind of like, it adds to the character of the doodle, in my opinion. It makes it look a little bit, not necessarily messy, but not so kind of perfect perfect, and it helps me to kind of like free up that perfection mindset that I often go in with. If I go with something like a fine liner though, it's very obvious when I go outside of the line or put something somewhere it's not supposed to be. So possibly going with a brush pen, in particular a hard tip brush pen, small hard tip can be really fun to doodle with as well. Um, Another one is the Papermate Flare. I think that it's just kind of fun to do doodles with a thicker nibbed pen, especially like a felt nibbed, thicker nibbed pen. It is very much a personal preference thing though. So consider what's gonna work well for the type of doodle you're doing, the kind of end product you want to have when it comes to the doodle and go from there. Now, one thing I will say is that if you want to add color to your doodles after the fact, it's pretty important to make sure that you're picking a pen that's going to accommodate for that as well. So for instance, the Tombow Furunosuke is a waterproof pen. Yeah, water-based pigmented ink, possibly waterproof. I think it is. I might be talking smack, but regardless, when you do your black line work, if you're gonna add color after the fact, especially with kind of like, you know, water-based markers, you probably wanna pick a pen that's gonna hold up against that, all right? Something like the Paper Mate Flare, which while I like drawing with it, uh, is not waterproof. And that means that you do run the risk when you go in and add color after the fact of kind of muddying that color, especially when you're coloring quite close to the lines, that kind of thing, all right? So something to consider, something to keep in mind. Now I can see a whole bunch of requests. As said, I will try to do my best to make sure that we accommodate them all. We'll see how many we can get through. I'm using this like, 
I don't even know. It came with a stationery pal order. It's a soft ring, little spiral bound notebook with grid paper. I, um, funnily enough, I have heaps and heaps of notebooks, but none that are like this. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, we'll just, we'll do this one. It'll be a nice kind of little, little book to doodle in as opposed to doing in my, uh, like Archer and Olive ones. I always get kind of like weird about doing scribbly doodles in them for some reason. I don't know. Mental barriers. So in terms of our doodling today, we're going to start with something super simple and then we're going to get to more of the kind of like requesting type stuff. And we're going to start with boxes. And I know that that sounds super not so fun, but in terms of adding decorative elements to your layouts, doing different styles of boxes is a great way to go. All right. Um, it, it can be very useful uh, in terms of just adding a little bit of character to it, a little bit of visual interest without anything that's like too difficult. Okay. So to start with, obviously you can just draw a box. That's kind of boring though. We're not just going to go with a box, but if we think about how we could embellish this box or make it slightly different, you can do things like adding a drop shadow. So that's effectively drawing the same shape, just slightly offset. All right. Um, so in terms of where you like to put a drop shadow, I always tend towards the right and down. All right. So if we think about this top corner that we have here, moving it to the right and moving it down, I'm going to put that corner here, this corner, moving it to the right and moving it down, it's going to go here. And this corner, moving it to the right and moving it down, it's going to go here. Okay. You can see I haven't done one with this one and that's because if I move it to the right and down, it's going to be in the middle of my box. I want to leave my box open for actually being able to like draw things in it. Now all I really have to do though is go and connect my points nice and easy. So a line down here, a line across here. You can see I'm like trying to hold it so that you can kind of see what I'm doing. Usually when I draw them like this, it's not very user friendly. But now we just need to draw the little lines that connect to that original box. And then we just have a simple drop shadow. All right. From here you could like color in the drop shadow. I often like to put in some little kind of a diagonal lines or something like that just to make it look a little bit interesting so maybe like this just so it looks more like a shadow and not just i don't know empty i like the i like the shadow parts to have a little bit of darkness to them which kind of makes sense considering it's a shadow but just adds a little bit of a visual interest element to an otherwise very simple box. Now you can also do drop shadows with brush markers or like pens or color pens kind of a thing. It doesn't have to be doodled in, but it's just something to make that box look a little bit interesting. Alrighty, another mm, simple, simple box design. Let's think. I'm going to go with a box with tape corners. Now, this is where I would usually get my pencil out. Uh, typically I use something like a 2H pencil because it's really, really faint, uh, which means that when I go to erase the lines, it's a little bit easier to erase. But for the purpose of actually being able to see things on camera, we're going to go with something a little bit darker. I'm going to go with a 4B pencil. So if you want to do a box that has like little tape corners or maybe a little strip of like fake washi tape on top of the box, my recommendation is to first sketch in where you want the box to go. So I'm going to put my box here. So essentially the same size as what we had before. And that's because I want to draw in those tape corners first. All right. Um, if I went and drew the box in first where, you know, very thick black outlines there means that if I go and put the tape in over the top, it's a little bit, eh, it doesn't look quite as nice. Um, so going from here, if we're adding tape corners, we just need to add two diagonal lines across each of the corners depending on where you want to put your tape, of course. And you can make those as wide apart as you want. I'm keeping them fairly thin or fairly close together so that then there's still going to be like lots of good space to work in that box. And then if you want to, you can either cap those off with straight lines or what I typically like to do is something a little bit jagged. So it kind of looks like somebody's ripped washi tape and put them in the corners. So just a little bit of a squiggle, a little jagged line for each of those. There we go. Looks pretty cute. Now, as we have those decorative corners in, that's when I'd go and put in the box behind it. So just following the pencil guides that we put in before, 
and just going and drawing over those, making sure not to draw over the little pieces of tape that we just put in. It's okay if you do, it's not really the end of the world, but it's not the design that I'm going for at this stage. Super. There we go. Looks pretty cute, or at least I think it looks pretty cute. From here you could again add some colour if you want to, you know, go colour in the little pieces of tape, or what people sometimes like to do, especially if they're pretending that this is tape that's like semi-transparent, semi-see-through, is they'll go and add a little bit of line work where the kind of edge of the box would actually be. So let's go see if I can find a thinner pen. I'm just going to use a micron here. Uh, so this is an O2 micron, quite a bit thinner than the Paper Mate Flare. You can just go and add in a little line over where that box's outline would have been. So it kind of shows that the box is there, gives a little bit of transparency to the, uh, the tape that you've drawn in. Monica's calling me out in the chat because I stayed up very late reading books. <laughs> Root! We will get to books though, eventually. So. Another type of box that we could do, we saw the request for a spiral bound box, love that. So the nice part about a spiral bound box is that you can just start with a regular box. So we'll draw in our box, one, two, three, four, five. I'm not intentionally trying to make these boxes all the same size, but I kind of like when they all look the same size. So once you've got a spiral bound box, okay, once you've got your box in, then we're gonna need to do the actual spiral bound part at the top kind of a thing. So the way that we do this is to draw in like the kind of holes that you have on a spiral bound. You can just draw those as small circles. Try and keep those circles fairly similar distances apart just to kind of add to the, the kind of, <laughs> I'm gonna say the visual correctness of it. Hopefully you get what I mean by that. Um, just makes it look a little bit better in terms of its finished product. Again though, we're going for doodles. It's all right if it's not perfect, uh, but it's okay also if you want it to be perfect. So in terms of this, now as we've got the little circles there, you could just leave it like that, uh, but we want to draw the actual spiral in. So for here, if I'm going to show you this, I feel like I want to show you bigger. So I'm going to draw it over here just in a bit larger of a size. So if we draw there, there. I know that somebody's going to call me out for how blunt my pencil is, but haha, I don't care. <laughs> Alrighty, can we see that? Is that not too bad? That's a little bit closer. So when we think about the spiral bound of a spiral bound notebook, it's effectively a circle as well, yeah? So we're going to need the circle of the spiral to come through the ring and over the top and around the back. So if we kind of map that in here, it's effectively like a circle on top of our circle. But if you think about the actual kind of design of a spiral bound notebook, you don't see the stuff that's behind the notebook. So given the fact that this is just pencil, we've already got our actual ring in. You know, we drew those over here, they're looking cute. We want to draw the one that comes out the front and over the back, but not the actual back side of the circle. Does that kind of make sense? Hopefully you can kind of see what I mean in terms of the line work there. So we've used the pencil to kind of sketch in where it would be and then the black line indicates what you would actually end up drawing in. All right so this kind of fainter pencil line here we wouldn't draw that part in in terms of like our black pen but that's roughly the kind of trajectory that we want to follow in terms of putting in the little ring bound part at the top. Okay, and you go and do that for each of them individually. So if we go and have a look at our actual one that we've started over here, the one that's a little bit smaller. So drawing in our rings, I'm going to go with a finer pen just because I've drawn quite small loops. If you plan this further in advance, then you can probably use the same pen. So we just need to draw it coming out of one side of the circle and then over the top like a little loop and do those for all of the little circles. Oh, it's so cute. So super cute. Again, trying to remain fairly consistent with this. It'll make it look a little bit better. Take your time with it. Use a pencil first. All of these things will make it look a little bit more special. <laughs> Uh, as opposed to a little bit cattywampus. So hopefully you can kind of see what I've done there. It might be a little bit tricky to see. We'll bring it a little closer to the camera so that then we can possibly have a little better of a look. So you see that all of those little loops have come out of the kind of interior left-hand side of each circle, gone around to the right, 
then over the top of the little notepad paper and tucked behind it, but not actually like drawn in front of the paper. Yes. There we go. Alrighty. So what else? What else? Boxes are good. Boxes are fun. Uh, what you could do also is if you were looking for something that was um, kind of the same, same kind of vein as the spiral that we've got here, but maybe it's been ripped off a spiral notepad piece of paper, uh, then we can also do that one. So we're going to start with the box again, but we're not going to draw the top of the box. We're just going to draw the sides and the bottom to start with. Okay. So when we rip a piece of notepad paper out of the little rings. Uh, obviously the rings kind of stay semi-intact, but usually the top edge gets a little bit warped, a little bit janky, a little bit ripped, right? So that's what we're kind of trying to draw here. Again, the nice part is it doesn't need to be perfect. One, because it's a doodle, and also because if you rip something out of a spiral-bound notepad, it doesn't look perfect when it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of helps us in terms of making our doodle, you know, giving it a little bit of flexibility to be a little bit messy. So for drawing that part, I'm going to show you over here first, and then we're going to move to over here. Okay, so if we start with the pencil outline that we had last time, because these are the holes that kind of represented our general spiral notebook structure, we're not going to be drawing the rings anymore. We're going to be drawing kind of like rips in terms of like having it ripped off of the notepad. So what I would typically do, uh, because I usually would not start with circles, I usually just go in with pen because <laughs> I'm lazy. Uh, I would draw the kind of center part of each of, well, the center part between each of these circles at the top. So by this, I mean, I would draw like that part there. So it kind of overlaps the circles slightly, slightly. <laughs> and I'm just gonna draw this one across because we're just gonna put a little cut line here. Okay, so don't focus on this one, focus on this part here. Okay, so we draw a dashed line effectively a top, across the top of the notepad. So we'll do the same over here, a little dashed line. There we go. And then what we need to do is draw the rips. Okay, so the rips come down towards the circles. So those are just little lines that go down towards the circles. Like this. Like this. And we'll do the same over here. All right. So. These little lines here that we've got, again, doesn't matter if they're a little bit kind of janky, doesn't matter if they're a little bit wobbly. In fact, if you want to, you can add a little bit more kind of like wobble or jaggedness to it to make them look a little bit ripped. But after this, we just need to draw in the circles. So where our circle would be, we just go from one side to the other, making sure that the top is still open, all right? Because that's where it would have been ripped out of the notepad. Do, 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 do. And we'll do the same over here. Little circles. Little circles without their tops. There we go. So you can see that in terms of my spacing, I haven't done the best job, but as said, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just a doodle. Now, if you're doing this with boxes that are a little bit bigger, because obviously I'm trying to make the best use of space here as I can, but if you're using boxes that are a little bit bigger, you're gonna end up with uh, a very decently looking uh, box. So if I show you an example, because we love a good example, because I used this style of box in my September setup. Yeah. So you can see that if the box is a little bit bigger, you're not playing with something that's quite so small, it does end up looking quite visually effective. And you can go and add other little bits and pieces inside the box to make it a little bit interesting too. So here's that tape trick that we did in the second one. Here's that kind of like you know, ripped off a spiral notepad type one. So all of those can be very good to add a little bit of visual interest. And also you can tie it into a theme. <laughs> Apparently I really suck at circles. That's fair. I'm not great at circles either. Um, you know, it comes with practice. But what I will say is that if you want to draw circles that are a little bit bigger and you don't want to freehand them, something like a circle stencil, which I have handy here uh, because we might use it in a bit, that can be very, very useful. I don't typically use it for really small circles because they couldn't be bothered, but it can be a useful, handy tool. Alrighty, 
more boxes. <laughs> I love it. It doesn't have to be perfect. My brain, ha ha ha, wrong. Yeah, no, I feel you. It's one of those things that like, I have to constantly remind myself, like, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like, you know, perfect is the enemy of good, all of this kind of stuff. But then when I get into my actual journal, I'm like, yes, but that applies to everybody except me. <laughs> like, it's one of those things that I'm trying to embody more. It's like, if you wouldn't say it to your best friend, don't say it to yourself. So it's like, if I turn to, I don't know, a picture, I don't know, with, with something scribbly, okay? Like, if my friend showed me this and they're like, oh yeah, I'm do doing an Australia theme in my journal, I wouldn't turn around and be like, well, that looks like shit. <laughs> like, that's not friendly. <laughs> then why would I say it to myself? Don't, don't be mean to us. And by that, I mean, don't be mean to you. Alrighty, so other types of boxes we can do, let's think. Hmm. We've got... Oh, okay, okay. Here's, here's another one that we can do that, that might be a little bit cute. Um, so for this one, I'm going to use a highlighter, actually. So grab a highlighter out. So one of the things that I sometimes like to do in terms of my doodles is that sometimes I'll put the color down first and then put the outline around the outside. Sometimes I'll put the outline and then color things in. All of that kind of thing works. So for this one, we're going to do effectively like a little kind of clipboard kind of looking box. Uh, so to do the little clip at the top, I'm going to use, oh gosh, my voice. I'm going to use the highlighter. Okay. This is one of the downsides about doing these live streams first thing in the morning for me is that my voice hasn't woken up. So it's just like, no, I'm asleep. I refuse. So in terms of drawing the little clip for our clipboard, uh, we're going to draw a little box just with the highlighter. So kind of just highlighting across. I'm going to zoom you in a little bit. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. It will get a little bit darker, but hopefully you'll still be able to see. Alrighty. Not too bad. Not too shabby. There we go. So we've just highlighted a little box here. And then in the middle of the little box, we're going to draw a semicircle, making sure that the middle of the semicircle is open. Okay. So middle of the box, trying to make sure that you can actually see, we're just going to draw a little semicircle, make it a little bit bolder. There we go. Looks pretty cute. Okay. That tiny looking handbag guy is going to be our clip. Okay. So when we think about like, uh, a clipboard. Typically the inside of the top of the clip is hollowed out. That's why our semicircle has that little hole in the middle. Now all we really need to do is go and outline that with our pen. So drawing in the sides of the box here for our little clip, drawing in the semicircle, and then the inside of the semicircle too. Oh, so cute. It's beautiful. <laughs> Your voice tries to play with you almost every live stream. I know, and that's because I do them at this time of the morning every single time. But getting like, Jessica, you need to wake your voice up before you actually get on live. Otherwise, violence. Oh my gosh. So in terms of a clipboard, typically speaking, the paper on a clipboard doesn't perfectly cover the entire of the clipboard. So when we draw our box in here, we're going to want to draw two boxes, right? So one internal box, which is like the paper on the clipboard, and then another external box, which is the kind of clipboard itself. Okay. Um, so for the paper, we're going to want that underneath the clipboard. So it needs to come out either side of the clip. That looks pretty cute. And then you just draw it in as you normally would. I'm going to draw it here. You can make it as long or as wide or whatever as you want. Uh, I do think that if you're going to be doing a clipboard kind of moment, make sure that your clip and the box size kind of make sense with each other. Like you don't want a hugely massive clip. Uh, without having a very kind of large box to match. Similarly, you don't want to have a tiny ass clip and have a huge box. Like it would look a little bit weird. My voice is asking for a tink. It can have a tink after, after we drew this one in. <laughs> so like we said, we also need the other one for this one. I'm going to go from pretty much the top of the clip. There we go. And just around the outside of the one we already had. That looks cute. You can also kind of use this one to indicate like a little clip on a piece of paper or a little stack of papers as well. That would be kind of cute as well. Uh, and just play around with the kind of positioning so that then your clipboard looks the way that you want it to. Like we said though, my voice needs a tink, so tink.
Alrighty, so what other boxes can we think of? So there was mention of the idea of a post-it note with an upturned corner. Now I will say, this is one of the ones that I find the trickiest, all right? And considering we're going with easy doodles, it might be a little bit harder to do. I always find that it's very difficult to get it looking the way that I want it to. And so thus for this one, I'm going to be starting in pencil. Um, so to start with, you just draw out your box. Yeah, box, makes sense. Ooh, using the pencil that people can see, please. What is she doing? I'm gonna put this pencil away. Otherwise I'll keep picking it up because it's my, it's my default pencil. So we start with our box. And then what's gonna happen is that one of these corners is going to look like it's kind of upturned. So if we find a piece of paper, so I can show you what I mean. So we take like a piece of paper and we're gonna kind of like curl the corner up as if it was doing that kind of a thing, yeah? Does that make sense? I don't want to bend this too much. I want to use it. <laughs> there we go. So, yeah, we'll begin the next one with voice exercises. La 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 la. What? Do, do, re, do, do, re, mi, re, do. <laughs> so for our upturned corner, uh, what we're going to want to do is effectively take one of the corners. I typically default to the bottom right. I just like There are certain things that I just default to in terms of doodling. So we're going to do the bottom right for this one. And we just want to like curve off the edge of that box, okay? Like it's a little rounded kind of moment, kind of similar to what you have on the corner of your notebook already. I mean, if you have a rounded cornered notebook, of course. <laughs> so rounding that off. And then in terms of actually drawing in the upturned page corner, okay, this is, this is where I show that I, I don't know what I'm talking about. You effectively need to draw a little curve off the top of that and then flick it down to the bottom. It's very hard to explain so I'm gonna bring you in a little closer so I can show you what I mean. <laughs> there we go. So you can see hopefully with all of my wobbliness we've got the corner of the box that we initially drew in then we rounded it off and then we drew like a little tiny smile at the top of it. And from the corner of the tiny smile, we flicked that down to the bottom of the box. Kind of, kind of makes sense. <laughs> draw a little butt, maybe we'll get there. We're doing boxes right now. <laughs> there we go. So now as we have our little sketch in, then you can go into it with your pen. So putting in the sides that are easy because easy first makes sense. And then remembering that we want to curve down the bottom here. What you can also even possibly do is erase lines that aren't the ones that you want to draw in so that you don't accidentally draw in the wrong ones. <laughs> so, goes down to the side and across. And yes, draw the little butt. There we go. Little flick over. Oh, super cute. Okay. <laughs> I got what you meant after I kind of looked at it a little longer. I'm like, yeah, alrighty, there we go. We're drawing a little, little, little page butt there. Little booty booty. <laughs> Looks good. Alrighty. So as said, the upturned corners are ones that I do very much need to pencil in first because I often find that the, uh, shape that I give them looks a little bit odd if I try to go in with just pencil, uh, without pencil first rather. And we don't, we don't want odd. We want, we want cute because that's what we're going with. We're going with like cute little doodles that we feel good about. All right, another one we can possibly do. Uh, so I said, I said before that you can draw little clips like this. Yeah. Um, that's a, that's one way to draw little clips. Another way to draw little clips on a piece of paper is if you're thinking about something more like a bulldog clip. Okay. Um, I do not have a bulldog clip here to show you. That's a lie. I do have one. <laughs> Oftentimes I find that if you're doodling something, it can be very helpful to have uh, the actual thing available to look at. Okay, so if we have a look at the little bulldog clip, you can see we've got a little box in the back and then we've got this kind of little, I don't know, how do we explain this shape, whatnot, this, this little shape thing here on the side, all right? So we need to have kind of like two lines that kind of make a little triangular piece coming up from the middle and then a little semicircle type number on top or whatever shape you really want to have it. Effectively though, looks like a tiny handbag. So putting that tiny handbag away so that we can actually draw a thing, 
we are going to want to draw yeah kind of like little legs so we're going to draw the bulldog clip in first because if we draw the box in then it's not going to really sit quite right what we can do of course if you want to make sure that you get it central is draw your box in first so we can draw the box in with pencil so that then we know where we need to put the bulldog clip right it can be very helpful to have guidelines yeah it's a little keyhole type shape right so i'm going to draw the sides and bottom of the bulldog clip okay and that's because in terms of my bulldog clip i'm just going to be going in and doing the kind of clip part the little keyhole shape with my pen so starting kind of in the middle and working your way slightly out to the left and slightly out to the right we want to draw the little keyhole shape there we go a little keyhole shape looks pretty cute and then behind that we're just going to cap off that little box there you can play around again with the positioning of this. If you want your uh, actual bulldog clip to kind of like stand out in terms of where the uh, clip part versus the, the uh, handle is, then you could also do it similar to what we did up here by using the little kind of uh, box of color and stuff like that. But now as we have the clip in, we can draw the box or like the kind of clipped paper, quote, quote, underneath it pretty cute okay it's just another little decorative element that we can add to our um yeah this looks like a salt shaker right a little decorative element that we can add to our boxes to make them a little more special than just a regular everyday box Alrighty, hanging picture type box a scroll <laughs> you just saw like heaps of ideas here <laughs> i love it <laughs> let's see i know that we, that we did have a couple before uh let's see scrolling 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 of the chat I'm not going to be able to find them because I'm really bad at actually like scrolling and reading so let's see we had mention of the idea of a little picture frame type moment uh, so for a picture frame it's technically just a box inside a box little box section type thing uh, we're gonna do four and then five across ish so we've got the outside box and then drawing an internal box, trying to make sure that the distance between the internal and external boxes is fairly similar throughout. Okay. Then once you have those two boxes, typically if I'm going to do a, uh, <laughs> Monica's talking about the real. Alrighty, so typically if I'm gonna do a picture frame, I will go out from the corner of the internal box to the corner of the external box and draw kind of like where the two pieces of wood in theory would connect. Now, depending on what type of theme you're doing, you could then turn this into a picture frame type thing. Uh, you know, you just have like a little kind of hanging piece behind it. There we go. So it's like hanging up. Draw something that's sticking into a wall there, like a little nail that it's hanging off. That's one option. Or if you ignore that, it kind of looks like a keyboard key, like a typing keyboard. So different ways that we could kind of think about it. All right. Let's see. <laughs> Very easy for boxes is stapled in the corner. Yeah. Yeah. Monica, you're distracting us. Monica's distraction counter goes up. Thank you very much. <laughs> so let's see. We've got staples in the corner. That one's pretty easy too. So you just draw your box and then a stapled corner is effectively just like a line, a line that doesn't quite touch the outside edges. That one's all good. Uh, typically, when you staple two pieces of paper together, you don't staple them from multiple corners unless you're doing, uh, you know, staples down like the edge or something like that if you're trying to make a booklet type deal. Um, but if you're doing it on an angle, typically you won't do one and then the other, you know? Alrighty. So we've had the note of a push pin page. All right. I like the idea of this. So we're going to draw the box in pencil first for that one, uh, only because the push pin might overlap the edge of the box. Effectively, any time where something's gonna overlap the edge of the box, so for instance, like a little clip and a clipboard kind of moment, or even like the little tape piece here, that's typically when I like to go and put the box in pencil first, just so that then it, um, you know, I don't accidentally draw the outline of the box where something is going to end up being. So one, two, three, four, five. There we go. 
Now, I don't really have any push pins to show you, uh, but typically speaking, a push pin often when we draw it into our mind, like we think about it, it's usually the type that has the kind of, if we just draw one over here, the kind of like thicker top and then thicker bottom and then is kind of straight in the middle and then has the kind of needle top type thing. Okay, so this is this is like a side view of it, a very quick sketchy side view of it though. Okay, so if we're drawing it from the top, what you can do is you can either think about it as just going straight in, you're not taking any kind of like side view of it, and in that case it just looks like a circle. Nice and easy. We love an easy circle, especially if you have a stencil or if you take your time with it or whatever. Again, it's a doodle, it doesn't need to be perfect. Or what is more typically seen is one that's like a slight side angle. So you can kind of see the top of it as a slight oval. And then you can slightly see the sides of it kind of coming down like that. Okay, this is a very bad picture. We're going to color it in and then we're going to draw a little pin number on the end of it. So that then it doesn't look a little bit too suspicious. Okay, there we go. There we go. Does this look better now that I've drawn everything in? No, it probably looks worse. I was really, really trying to make it look not suspicious, but it's fine. So in terms of the kind of push pin moment, that one I do consider to be a little bit more detailed, a little bit more challenging, uh, especially if you're going with this kind of like side angle type thing with it. Uh, aw, hey Kay, it's a pleasure to have you here with us. So. If you're going from a side angle, it can be a little bit more tricky, especially if you're trying to make it look not super suspicious. But <laughs> if we go in with a pencil first because it'll just make it a little bit easier. So we want to make it so that then in the middle is where the push pin is kind of coming in because I don't know about you, I get very weird about making sure things are in the middle of something. It's also like, you know, whenever I go to my parents' place and we're hanging things on the line, they have a bunch of different colored pegs and I need to make sure that the, uh, that the pegs are all the same color if they're in the same piece of, I don't know, what's the word? Clothing. Anywho. So, little circle kind of top. Little fluted type sides, just slightly, just slightly. Doesn't need to be hugely decorative. We can draw the little circle at the bottom and then kind of connect the two. Hard to describe, but again, if you're drawing this small enough, it'll be just fine. Now this will probably be one of those instances where I would prefer to go in with color first and then just do our outlining. And because it is a smaller, kind of more detailed thing, I would usually go with a thinner pen. So like the O2 rather than the Paper Made. So I'm gonna make these lines just a little bit less obvious for myself. Don't wanna get rid of them too bad. Only because once I color over the top of it, it's going to be really difficult to actually put the um, the color over and then erase the pencil. So if we go over the top, and we'll put this kind of in the middle so you can kind of see what I'm doing. We're drawing in the circle of color at the top, the little circle of color at the bottom, and then connecting them with a little box. Okay. So just, just so that you can see that a little bit bigger, because obviously this is quite small, we've drawn a circle of color at the top for the top of the push pin. A circle of color at the bottom, kind of oval, I suppose, is probably more actually what the shape is. And then between them, we're just drawing in a rectangle that we're coloring in. Kind of makes sense. It's a little bit easier to see when it's a little bit bigger, I feel. From there, we then want to go and add in our detailed lines. Uh, so again, I'm going to use something a lot thinner because this is quite small bring it back here. So we're going to curve it around the top. I've decided not to go the whole way around. You can go the whole way around if you want to. I think it's just going to look a little bit better. Uh, we draw the two lines coming down to the middle and then a little curved line around the outside. So showing you what I mean a little bit bigger so that then we can kind of repeat that process. So starting at the top, we have outlining the oval, going slightly in, because I think it looks better. Coming down with the sides, slightly inside of that oval. And then the oval comes from around the back to the other side. 
kind of makes sense. <laughs> it seems so easy when someone else does it, but then I almost guarantee that you're going to screw it up when you try. Yeah, no, fair. I, I always find that like with online drawing tutorials where they're like, okay, we start with this simple line work. I'm like, okay, okay. And then they get to like, and then we had the fi finishing touches and now it's like amazing. And I'm like, cool. So mine looks like, like crap. No, <laughs> that's, that's great. When it comes to the actual kind of push pin part, obviously the pin side, like the actual kind of very stabby end, is going to be inside of the paper. So we don't actually want to draw all of that. We just want to draw part of it. All right. And you can also draw like a little kind of hole there if you want to on your paper. If it makes it a little easier. So I'm going to draw a little bit and then a little dash there. So it looks like it's stabbed through. We take that to our bigger example so that we can see it a little bit easier. We draw two lines coming out the middle of it because this is like the push pin part. It's going to come out of the middle and then a little line where it's pushed through the paper. Hoopa! It looks a little bit strange, I think, when you draw it really, really big. But oftentimes if you're drawing this in your journal, it's going to be a lot smaller. So it's not going to look quite so strange. That kind of makes sense. So now as we've got our little push pin in though, that's looking cute. We can go ahead and draw the box around the outside. So bringing it up to the push pin, but not through the push pin, because uh, otherwise there was absolutely no point in <laughs> just sketching the box out first. But that looks pretty cute, All right? And you don't actually have to use uh, the, the thicker pen for that. You could keep it with the thinner pen if you want to. I just want to make sure that it is super visible for you. And I also really like writing and drawing rather with the paper mate flair. All right. Did we have any other box requests in particular? Um, I might have missed them, so I apologize. While you give me suggestions, I'm going to do a little tink. Tink. There we go. <laughs> Drink time. Ah. Oh. oh, I'm glad that you appreciate the videos. I hope they have been helpful, and it is a pleasure to have you here with us. Yay for starting journaling. That's very exciting. I am. Um, when I started journaling, in terms of like my doodle work and stuff, I was a lot more precious with it. And maybe you guys can kind of relate, especially if you've been doing this for a while. Um, it can be very freeing. The more that you do this, the more kind of comfortable and chill that you get with it, you know, is what I find. Alrighty, a little Polaroid, love that. So again, the nice part about Polaroids is that they are very simple. Um, they're effectively just boxes in boxes and you just need to play around with the position. Okay, so if we even think about like our little clipboard moment from up here, you, you cover that up and it almost looks like Polaroid, right? So Polaroid, typically speaking, uh, different Polaroid cameras are going to give you slightly different shapes, but most often the shape that's kind of associated with it is a slightly longer than it is wide box and then a very square looking photo. Okay, and this is where something like your dock red paper can really help with that. So if I'm going one two three four five across and i want the length to be a little bit longer than the width uh, i'm going to need to come more than five down so we're going to do one two three four five six mm, six and a half seven i'm going to do seven this time it might look a little bit too long but that's okay because again you just need to play around with it effectively to find the um, size and shape that you like the most okay so for me this one is probably a little bit too long to make me happy but concept that matters here okay so this is the outside edge right this is the outside of the polaroid not the internal picture because typically the internal picture is something a little bit more akin to a square oftentimes when you see polaroids drawn out they have the um internal line work not centered Okay, it's not perfectly centered so that you have the same amount of space on every single side. It's usually slightly further up. Okay, so if we think about drawing that in here, so using this as an example, okay, if we were doing it so that it was perfectly sized on every single side, you would have something similar to this. I say perfect, that's not perfect, but hopefully you get what I mean. The distance between the internal line and the external line, or like the inside box and the outside box, is very even here. We don't want that, okay? We want the bottom one to be a little bit further away. So rather than drawing our line here where we've got it, we're going to put that one up a little bit, okay? Maybe about here-ish, okay? And we'll just get rid of the one that we had from before so that you can hopefully see what I mean, okay? 
In terms of the actual like structure of it, it is quite simple, but the thing that we're really playing around with here is the kind of size and positioning to make it look like a Polaroid, not just like, I don't know, a box with a border. So now as we've got that in, we can go and actually draw it in. Again, reminding ourselves that doodles don't need to be perfect, they just need to be good. Not too bad at all. If you actually want to um, put things in like, you know, as if they would have like little Polaroid kind of like stuff on them or whatever. Maybe this is a, a, a box for like a daily or something like that. So you could be like January, whatever it is, 15th for me, 2024. Okay. And like write out your tasks for the day, something a little bit cute. Alrighty. So loose leaf paper, binder, three hold on the left hand side, lined paper. Nice. Alrighty. In that case, that one's nice and easy. So we can just draw an elongated box to start with because if we're thinking about binder paper typically it is of a size that is kind of longer than it is wide from here then we go and draw in the details so we need well, I mean you don't need anything but I'm going to use <laughs> a red pen uh, to draw in the kind of um, what's the, what's the word detail elements um, because for me the black is like the outline and then if you want to do any kind of inside details then they would get like a different color based on whatever it is that we're doing. So for a three, what do we say, a three hole binder book type thing, one of them is probably going to be smack bang in the middle, so that one's nice and easy, and then the other two are going to be up and down from that. It has been a very long time since I've seen a binder, so if I put these in the wrong place, I apologize to all the binders out there who feel slighted. Not my intention. But I'm going to put one here and here. So it's not kind of in the middle of where those two, like it's not in the middle of the bottom and the middle section. It's not like a quarter of the way up the page. It's kind of closer to the edge than it is to the middle. I'm explaining this poorly. Hopefully the visual makes sense. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to have to actually go and look up a reference for like what loose leaf paper ruled, ruled loose leaf paper looks like. Um, also a really good tip. If you are going to draw a doodle and you don't know what a thing looks like, just Google it. Just look it up. It's no, no harm, no foul in using a reference image for yourself because You'll just feel better when it actually looks a little bit more akin to the actual thing. <laughs> Binder justice. <laughs> so, in terms of the loose leaf paper that I have at least, typically it has a red ruled margin down the left hand side, and then each of the lines are blue. Okay, so we're going to draw that one coming down from the top. If you have a dark grid notebook, it is a lot easier to do this, which is very nice. And then typically speaking, the ruled lines that come out of that are either like a pale gray or a pale blue. I am going to use a pale gray because I don't think I have a pale blue. And another tip, when doodling, when drawing, when doing anything in your journal, rotate your journal so that it is in an orientation that is most useful for you actually being able to move your hand in a way that is comfortable. For me, when I'm drawing and I want to draw a straight line, drawing it towards myself is easiest. So because I'm going to be drawing a whole bunch of horizontal lines here, I'm going to turn my journal so that I can draw them vertically. Okay, so I'm going to put one over here. We're going to start on all of the lines that are already there because they're very nice guidelines. But because typically on a loose leaf piece of paper or like a ruled piece of uh, paper that you might put in a binder, it has a top margin that's quite a lot bigger so that you can put in like a header. We're going to leave that first box open and then go and do this again on each of the other ones. So like straight through the middle. <laughs> this looks cute as heck. Not too shabby at all. So obviously because I'm using a full grid notebook rather than a dot grid notebook, the ones that are on the grid line are a little bit darker. Uh, wouldn't happen so much if you were using either like blank notebook paper or uh, like dot grid notebook paper. But hopefully, hopefully you can see the little kind of ruled line moment. Looking very cute. Looking very swish. I feel happy about it. Okay, let's see. We are going to do one more box, and it's going to be a box with a paperclip. Now, again, 
there are some things that Jess cannot draw very well. One of those is a paperclip. Um, so in terms of like drawing a paperclip by itself, I'm pretty sure it's effectively just like a spiral. <laughs> like, like this. <laughs> Something that looks kind of like that. This is not a good picture of a book clip by any stretch of the imagination. So let's go and have a look at what a paperclip actually looks like. Otherwise, scandal. <laughs> It's okay, I'm just, I just have the struggles. All right, literally so that then you guys can see what I see. Can you see what I see? Da, da. We're gonna bring up the paper clip. There we go, paper clips. So we obviously not gonna be drawing clippy because like, oh dear. <laughs> Like, trauma. Do you need help? I'm like, yes, I do, but you can't assist me. So we're going with something that kind of looks like this. Just trying to remember which part is, like, actually going to be at the front versus the part that isn't. <laughs> Abby didn't break Jess. Jess's inability to draw a paperclip broke Jess. <laughs> she drew too many spirals on this. All right. So if we think about it in terms of its structure, we're going to we're gonna stick with this guy here. So it kind of curves down, from down, up around back over and like that okay good good to have a, an actual example here now notably when you're drawing a paper clip uh the sides of the paper clip are often very straight and the ends or like kind of like the turning points they are curved in terms of my one this is a lot more kind of oval oval than it is rectangle with circles on the end of it <laughs> If I actually wanted to make it look like a little bit better, I would probably sketch in a box for myself so that then I could kind of keep my lines a little bit straighter. Uh, so with like curves on either end. This is looking like a little bit of a band-aid moment, but that's okay. And then we can go and draw in where the uh, curves actually would be. So it's like Curves up, goes down, curves up, goes down. That looks a little bit better. Looks a little bit more reasonable. Because this guy was just a little bit too, I don't know, ovalish than it was boxish. But as said, not all of this is going to actually be, uh, you know, super helpful because we, we don't actually put every single part of the paperclip on the paper itself, okay? So, I, I'd drawn this upside down, but effectively what I want, <laughs> if we just flip it around, is my paper to be... I know this isn't dry and I'm going to smudge things. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Don't be angry at me. We effectively want this, but the paper is going to be here. So we won't see this part because it'll be behind the paper, yeah? So really all you actually get to see from a paper clip is just this little kind of initial loopy bit here, or this part that we're gonna highlight so that you can actually see it. That's the part that we're actually gonna see for the paper clip. It's not going to be all of the other stuff that we drew in. So there's your paper clip, there's the paper, if that kind of makes sense. Okay, now as we've actually nutted through it and figured it out for ourselves, we can actually go and draw it in, in a way that is going to be a little bit easier. Because obviously you don't have to draw out a full paper clip to draw the paper clip. Has anybody seen that episode of Spongebob? I have not. Where he's like, oh yeah, you know, you just start by drawing like the Mona Lisa and then you r erase everything and you have a perfect circle. <laughs> like, that's what that feels like. Okay, so... Just like we usually do anytime we have something overlapping our box, we're going to go put the box in first. Just a sketch of the box, not with the actual line work. Okay, that looks pretty cute. And then, in terms of the paper clip, like we showed over here, just flip it back around. Whoopa! Like we showed here, it's effectively down, around, up, and over. Okay. We're going to put it over here. So, down around, up, and over. Effectively, it just looks like a little oval again, which is kind of nice, similar to what we did before with our little spiral guy over here. But I'm also going to go and outline it just so that it sticks out a little bit. 
Uh, effectively, it's like a backward C, which is kind of nice. There we go. Tonk. And around. That looks pretty cute. There we go. Now we can go draw our box in, and then hopefully it won't look too shabby. We can all rejoice at the fact that Jess was able to draw a paperclip, even if only slightly strangely. Like we said, if you take your time with your doodling, it's going to look a lot better. Obviously, I want to show you quite a few ideas in this video, so we're going a little bit faster, you know? Yeah, it's kind of like a J. It's, it's like a J if you uh, have like a curly top J kind of a thing. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. All right, not too shabby, not too bad. Let's zoom out and have a look at the mess that we've made. That's in. Try again. There we go. Much better. So this is what we have thus far. This is our little kind of like little box inspiration station looking thing. Like we said, doodles don't have to be perfect. Doodles don't have to be too hard. And you can do a lot of stuff with your boxes just to make things look a little bit decorative without having to do like, I don't know, themed type things. Are there any questions about boxes? Just while I tink. And not everyone can conquer hashtag paperclip purgatory. <laughs> That's also the thing, right? When you do your doodles, um, like after you've been doing them for a little while and trialing new things, there are going to be certain things that you're a lot better at doodling than others. Yeah, that there are certainly certain things that I am a lot better at doodling than other things. And I think that's um, kind of why I've been as apprehensive as I have to actually put out easy doodle tutorials, because oftentimes I don't think... I don't feel like I can draw. Like, I feel like I can I can sketch and I can kind of copy type of a thing, but trying to bring forward art from my own mind hole, very difficult, all right? Um, all of that kind of stuff. Let's see. So we need to stop the screen here so that I can... There we go. That looks better. So boxes, great way to add some visual interest without having to do anything too, too hardcore. Uh, but like, like we said... Give it, give it some time, give it some practice, take your time with it, start with pencil, all of the good stuff. Okay, now as we've done boxes, let's move on to books. Would books be something that people would like to see? <laughs> I feel like books are another, uh, is a very nice transition uh, between boxes and other doodle type things because oftentimes books are just like, boxes with details <laughs> to be completely honest did i say mind hole again yes mind hole i, I say i say mind hole a fair bit i just don't think i say it as often on the channel as um as other places Alrighty, books let's start simple because simple is good all righty i need to find a ruler one second All right, found my ruler. Do you need a ruler for this? No, all right, you, you certainly don't, um, especially if you're going with kind of like a more doodly type thing. I often find though that when it comes to like the straight edges of books in particular, uh, I do prefer to use a ruler. General recommendations for rulers. Uh, I personally prefer to have one that is in centimeters and millimeters or centimeters and millimeters, uh, mainly because it matches the dock grid of my notebook because I use notebooks that have a five millimeter dot grid. So if you have one that has centimeters on it or millimeters, then it's going to line up very nicely with that and make it a lot easier to do counting. I also prefer to have one that's clear plastic so that then you can get things very perpendicular. All right. Um, <laughs> let me be your ruler. ruler. Very good. <laughs> so do you need a ruler for this? No, technically not. Technically, you do not need to have one. Uh, I just personally prefer to have one. <laughs> yeah, she in books, she says knowingly. I know, right? <laughs> so let's start. Uh, in terms of book designs, we're going to go very, very sketchy and very, very general to start with uh, to kind of show you some, some different ideas for it. So of course, you could just have a box. Love that for us. Uh, not super fun though, because it's really just a uh, kind of like face forward type of a book so we often like to add a little bit of dimension I am going to take you through these with a little more detail we're just kind of giving you what's the like the preview the trailer okay um, then you can do ones that are a little bit more kind of a three-dimensional so maybe has some little pages on the side maybe has a little bit of decoration on the front type thing 
couple words, blah, 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 blah. I realized I forgot to turn the autofocus off on this, so I apologize. Um, other types of books that we can do, we can do like an open book kind of moment. So curving it out and then it looks kind of like that type thing. Maybe add again some more details or whatnot to make it look a little interesting. Maybe add some words in there type of a thing, right? Like we said before, a doodle is a, is is done well if you can look at it and go, I know what that is, <laughs> right? So if you looked at that, even though it's messy and even though it's scribbly, you'd be like, that's a book, I hope. Otherwise, I've done a bad job. Um, you can also have books where it's like you're viewing from the front cover. So you've kind of got like the spine and then either side of the book. And then you've got the pages that come out of that. There we go, kind of a thing. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. Again, with the front cover, with the words, the author, and then like a blurb on the back or like whatever. Okay, so um, lots of different ways that you can draw books. Often I find that the easiest way to start is with an... Oh, probably just a simple kind of like typical boxy type looking book, little book guy, so that you kind of view it from the side. Okay, that's probably the easiest place to start, probably. So we're going to start with that one. And or a stack of books, actually. A stack of books is probably a pretty easy place to start too. So now as I've drawn out a whole bunch of scribbles to kind of like get my thoughts onto the paper, let's go and have a look at actually doing some of these in a way that looks much better. <laughs> Will this be available later? Yes, uh, all of the live streams are available on the channel. If you go to the live tab when you're on the channel itself, um, you'll be able to find all of our previous live streams there. So, books, books. Let's see, running list, stack of books, all of the books, <laughs> scroll. When, I, when I, I'm pretty sure that the salt shaker comment was from this guy, right? Let me know if I'm wrong. I'll, I'll draw a salt shaker for you, but I'm pretty sure that that's what we were talking about when we were talking about the salt shaker. <laughs> so we're going to start with books on their side because it's probably the easiest place to start. Now, when it comes to drawing books, like I said, you probably want to use a ruler, at least for the sides, if you want them to look particularly neat and nice. But I'm not going to. Ha ha ha. Mainly because I have a full grid notebook, so I'm just going to use the grid itself to help me out here. Uh... Would you guys prefer, and I'm not going to put a poll up just because I'd have to type it out, would you prefer me to use the left-hand page or the right-hand page here, only because I don't want the shadowing to distract people, but I also don't want to waste paper. So if the shadowing is going to be distracting, type R, let me know. If the shadowing is not going to be distracting, you don't really mind, then type L. You have approximately 20 seconds while I tink, drink my drink. <laughs> Alrighty, one for L. Ooh. <laughs> Alrighty. L, L, R, L, 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 R, R. Alrighty, it looks like the L's have it. So hopefully it won't be too much of a hassle. I'm going to try turning up the brightness a little bit so that then hopefully uh, it's not going to be... Whoop, that is that is not the brightness dial. That was that was a choice. <laughs> Just, I don't know if you saw it, but it got very uh, orange and then blue over here. So we'll put that away. Hopefully that kind of helps it a little bit easier. All right, you will take Salt Shaker off the list. All right, making sure that my autofocus is on. We don't want that boo hiss so that we can actually see what we're doing. So books from their side. Obviously you can have a uh, vertical stack or a horizontal kind of, I don't know, uh, arrangement of the books. We're going to do uh, the... We're going to do the vertical one first, okay? Because that one's nice and easy because all of the books are going to start at the same place, all right? When it comes to drawing these in, uh, you can do book by book. That's totally fine. Uh, so, for instance, just drawing a kind of slight, slight curve at the bottom. Not too big, okay? We don't want it to even look remotely like a U. We want it to look like... A, a gentle, very gentle uh, kind of curve here. If you make it look too curved, it'll look a little bit strange. And then depending on how high up you want the book to be, you just draw either side of the book, like so, and then cap it off with another super gentle curve, okay? So that is one book on its side, like where we're looking at the spine edge of the book, okay? Um, 
as you then build in more books, they can either stay in the same orientation, uh, but you're probably going to want them to be a little bit varied for some kind of, you know, just general visual interest. So you could do ones that are a little bit wider. We do one that's like about yay wide. Uh, and they can also be different heights. So bring them up to different heights. Again, trying to make sure that the sides of the book are fairly straight. Um, and then that the top and the bottom are slightly curved. I think it just makes it look a little bit more realistic without being like, you know, too realistic. We're not, we're not aiming for realism here. Uh, we can also have ones that are kind of in series with each other because hopefully all of the books in a series are going to be the same kind of size in terms of their height and, well, possibly width, but mainly height. So we can put a couple books in a little series together. Again, just using some straight up and down lines and then the slight curving at the top. <laughs> Can we have a poll about if poles are good value? You guys know that the poles are, are classics. We love the poles. It's just because my computer is a, is a special little baby right now and it doesn't handle the jandle very well. Okay, so just go through, put in, put in your little books. Turn your microphone so people can hear you. Put in your little books in, uh, you know, their vertical orientation, making sure that the widths are different, making sure that they all kind of stop at roughly the same point, because in theory, these are all like sitting on a shelf. That's kind of what I'm envisioning here. You could also draw the shelf in to start with if you wanted to, uh, which in that case, I would probably opt to use a ruler because I would prefer my shelf to be very straight. So I'll just draw in a little little shelf kind of guy here. There we go. Looks pretty cute. There's my little shelf. Nice and straight for the shelf. It's just a rectangle. It's nothing special. And then from there, draw your books in on top of the shelf. Just draw a whole bunch of lines. There we go. That looks pretty cute. Cap them off with some... There we go. Hoop. Like drawing this one too close to the edge. There we go. This book can be nice and close to the edge as well. And we'll draw one here and here. Little curves, little curves. Two in series with each other. Okay. Not too bad. In terms of the bottom of these ones, obviously they touch the shelves. I would usually not do this. If we're going with easy, touching the shelf is fine. Okay. If we're going with something that looks a little bit better, uh, then I would probably still do the little kind of curved edge where the very tip tip it's not really a tip of a curve but the, the very lowest point of the curve is the part that kind of sits on the shelf so it would end up looking a little more like this i think that it's kind of hard to see what i'm talking about so i'm gonna show you in a second there we go so you see how just by adding those kind of like very small whoopa, details it just makes it look just a little bit better, I feel. Um, it's it's really not a big difference, and you don't need to do it. I think it just adds a lot of kind of more realism to it. Again, we're not really aiming for realism, but yeah. Okay, so put this one back down. Looking cute. Now, in terms of actually making these look even better, uh, what you can do is go and add in some detail work as well. But we're going to add some colour first. For the colour, I'm just going to use some Ohuhu markers because I haven't used them before and I'm feeling like they're feeling neglected. So we'll bring, bring our little Ohuhus over here. Uh, I haven't really tested out a lot of these colours, so we're just going to kind of pick them up at random and, and hope that I'm picking up something that doesn't look bad. Uh, so we're going to put this guy in, a little green kind of moment here, it looks pretty cute. And we'll put another little green one over here. Okay. And we're going to want maybe like a kind of yellowish type colour, why not, if I can get it out. Struggle, struggle, struggle. Like I said before, the Papermate flare is not waterproof, so as I'm doing this I'm trying to be fairly careful to make sure that I don't touch the outside edge or anything like that and make a mess uh, because that's not really what I want. So the nice part about a book's theme like this, especially if you're doing a lot of little kind of bookshelf type things, is that one, super flexible in terms of color palette. Uh, two, very easy doodles. Like we showed, it's effectively just a bunch of slightly rounded rectangles. It's not, not really the biggest struggle bus in the world. Um, but also like you can add as much or as little detail as you want and it still looks like books like right now they're just 
you know, rectangle sitting on a shelf and we can all kind of appreciate what they are uh, without having to, you know, use too much of a stretch of the imagination. But you can also go and add in some little details and we're going to show you how to do that in a second. There we go. It's our little shelf. So cute. Oh my gosh. If you want to add a little bit of kind of like wood-ish texture to the uh, shelf in particular, if you're using something like a brush water marker, like a water kind of based ink, you can just go and add a couple of like extra lines over the top and it'll just darken up the color in those kind of parts. There we go. It just adds a little bit of a uh, texture to it. It doesn't need to be heaps, but see how it looks a little bit varied kind of nice. All right, so I'm putting the pens to the side because we're done with you for now uh, so that we can add a little bit more detail. Now, depending on what you want to do, depending on what you have the time, effort, inclination to do, this could be a really good opportunity to get out something like a gold uh, gel pen if you're a gel pen kind of person, or you could get out some gold paint if you want to or anything like that. We're just going to go in and do the detail with a micron like finer point pen. Um, so typically when I'm doing the detail work, I like to keep it fairly simple, but even just the simple stuff is still going to look fairly good. Okay. So one of the ways that we can add some detail is add like a little band across one of the parts. So that's just doing two kind of horizontal lines that are maybe slightly curved. There we go. Little band kind of moment there. Uh, you can also add in maybe like a little circle or something. You could add in a, a larger band if you wanted to. All right, so it's kind of got like a little little strip down the middle type thing. You could add a couple of lines for like multiple bands if you wanted to. Vary the width of the little bands. Uh, you could add in maybe just like some kind of lines down the side as if it kind of represents like text or something like that. Um, Let's see, we're just going to do a little kind of varied little bits and pieces along here. You could always put these in first if you wanted to before you add color and then, um, you know, color them in different colors. You could just color them in black if you want to and just add in little bits and pieces if you want. It's kind of just like a nice little way to give each of the books a little bit of little bit of character and of course you can just leave some of them blank if you want to they could just be like I don't know naked spines oh my gosh there we go add in those little pieces maybe a little box or something there we go just little simple shapes that make them look a little bit detailed a little bit decorative but it's nothing major all right so this is probably what I would consider to be the easiest way to do book doodles okay they're literally just blocks of color in fact if you wanted to you could just go in with your highlighter for instance uh, like we did before just add a whole bunch of stripes and that'd work now where the on the side book kind of thing gets a little bit uh a little bit more challenging is when we're thinking about something like um, books on an angle, books on a lean. Yeah. Mm. So when it comes to doing this, one of the biggest issues I find that people do is that they just do the line too far. A, a lot of the time they, they draw the line in, they do too far. So we're going to draw a book to start with. We're going to draw this guy here. He's going to be like our pillar, our pillar book. Our little beacon of hope. We're going to draw him twice so that I can kind of show you what I mean by this. All right. And for the sake of having something for things to rest on, we're going to draw a little shelf as well. There we go. That's kind of the shelf. Kind of. <laughs> He's very much teetering here, but hopefully you get where we're going with this. Okay, so there's the shelf. And there's the book. And we're going to draw a book that's on a lean. Okay, so one of the biggest issues I find when people try and do their books on a lean is that they will draw the first line coming off of the book. Like, you know, it's going to lean here. So off the book, leaning down. All right. And it touches the shelf here. Okay. Then typically what they do is they go, okay, well, that looks good. That's where the book's going to start there. It's going to kind of come off here. So that's like the kind of like top of the book. Kind of like what we've got here, the top of the book. And then they keep their line parallel to this one. Looking good. Love that because, you know, books have parallel edges. But they bring it all the way down to the shelf. 
now it looks like the book is getting kind of like either melted into a puddle or sinking into the shelf. All right, this isn't this isn't quite what we want here. All right, so we draw in our little shelf moment here. Just, just there. There's our little shelf. The book is turning into a little book puddle, which is not what we want. We don't want the book melting, melting into the shelf. Blech. No. Okay. Instead, what we want to do is rem <laughs> Simba, remember where you came from. Not quite. Okay. But if we grab a post-it note to stand in for our book. Okay. This is our book now. You are the book now. We're just going to cut it so that it's a little bit shorter though, because <laughs> otherwise it's not going to, not going to make a lot of sense. Okay, so we take our little book, and we cut it, so it actually looks like a little book. Okay, this is our book on a shelf, looking very cute, love that for us, good job book on a shelf. Uh, now what we're going to do though is tilt the book and see what it actually looks like if we tilt the book. Okay, so we take the book, we tilt it as if it's hanging, like leaning on there, and you can see that at the end here, it does exactly the same thing as it did at the top. It touches at one corner, it doesn't touch it both. All right, does that kind of make sense? Uh, so when we actually go and draw this in, we do not want to draw the second line all the way down to the shelf. We want to draw it, yeah, it's a little chonksy book. We want to draw it so that it comes down to and in line with wherever it hits the shelf. Does that kind of make sense? Alrighty. So, we're going to put put our little book reference, little sticky note here, to kind of show us what we, what we mean by this. And exactly the same way, we're going to start by drawing wherever the book has hit the other book, and down to the shelf, okay, with our little shelf down the bottom here. We're going to draw the line over the top, this one is perpendicular to whichever line we originally drew. Do you guys know what perpendicular means? Okay, just in case you don't. Just in case you're like, Jess, what the fuck is that word? What are you doing to me? This is too early or late at night. Parallel means in line with. Perpendicular means at a 90 degree angle to. Alright? So this little line that we've drawn in here, we want that roughly perpendicular, or roughly 90 degrees. 90 degrees away or turned from this line that we just drew in that represents the side of the book. Okay, so now as we've got that, we can start drawing in that other line uh, that comes down from the top. Okay, keeping it so that it's roughly the same width away, roughly the same width away from the one that we had before, but we do not want to draw it all the way to the shelf. No, 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 no. Otherwise you get a puddle book. We don't want a puddle book. Okay. Step what we want is we want another little perpendicular line, one that's 90 degrees, all right, like the corner of a box that comes away from here. Now we have a beautiful gap. Oh, this is the book gap, okay? <laughs> Such big words for this hour. I apologize, okay? <laughs> there we go. This is happy times. Yay. Smiley face. This is sad puddle book. We don't want a sad puddle book. You see how now... Our edge just looks way better than it did before. Way better. So we're all right. We're okay. This is looking much, 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 much cuter. I don't know if you can hear my squeaky chair. I really need to oil it. Squeak, squeak, squeak. <laughs> Tink. We love it though. This looks much better. We're much, much happier with it. Still easy. You just need to make sure that you don't go too far with your line work, okay? And we can add the same kind of details that we had before. We can add in, you know, the little circle pieces and the little kind of like bands and whatever that we added in. We can do the same on this guy, just making sure that we're keeping it in line with the edges of the book that we've drawn in, that kind of stuff. Drawing a little box label or whatever, little writing labels, blah, 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 blah. It's cute, we like it all righty so that's on the side uh from the spine that one's nice and easy if you're doing a book stack it is literally the same thing you're just rotating it yeah <laughs> so we'll go through that one fairly quickly when it comes to doing a stack of books oftentimes a stack of books looks best if you're going to do uh 
like slight variation in terms of horizontal positioning. So like slightly to the left, slightly to the right kind of thing. Also thinking about uh, the width of each of the books, so varying that so it has a little bit of visual interest. But if we just go and draw one of those in quickly, again, you're going to want to slightly curve the edges of the book. Just a little bit, doesn't need to be a lot. Uh, and then very straight draw in between those. Again, you can use a ruler for this uh, and make sure that you turn your journal in an orientation that makes you happy. I am not very good at drawing horizontal. I'm much better at drawing vertical, so I would flip it on its side, okay? When we did this guy here, we tried to keep them all in line with each other. You can do that with your vertical stack if you want to, but I personally think it looks a little bit nicer if you don't. So we'll draw in like a little small book here. And then maybe we could have like a slightly wider book that comes off the edge here. And maybe we could draw a little skinny mini book that sits in here somewhere. And maybe another little skinny mini book. That kind of a thing. Again, they're just rectangles with slightly curved edges. Take your time with it. It'll make it look better. And we can draw. Just a little book on top here. And then when you look at it in the correct orientation again, like, you know, with your journal, the, the way that you typically use it, whichever way that is for you, then you've got your little stack of books and you can go and add in those little details just like we did before with the circles and the boxes and the lines and whatever else you want to use. Very cute. Love it. Love that for us. Etc. ETC? ETC. <laughs> so books on this side easiest book to do but we're, we're here for we want more we wanted to do books of all variety of shape sizes orientations orientations in particular because this is this is one orientation for books so if we're thinking about <laughs> Winifred's voice and book yes if we're thinking about a book from the front though so thinking about like the front cover of a book do I have any books nearby that I can use no no, you're all journals, you don't count. No, it's okay. So, we're going to zoom you out a little bit so we can have a look at a book. Eh, that's in. Come on, you. Whee! So, having a look at this book, you can see that if we look at it from its very front cover, I'll come out a little bit further, if we look at it from the front, it is effectively just a rectangle. That's nice and easy. Um, maybe you can add in a little bit of detail if you want to in terms of like the, uh, what's this guy called? elastic closure. If you have a book with an elastic closure, so like more so a notebook, you can maybe add in like the bookmark poking out the bottom as a nice little detail. That's a nice easy thing to do. Uh, then if you start to turn it onto its side slightly, you know, if you're doing it on a slight angle, you then can start to see the side of the book and we can draw in that part too. As I said, it's oftentimes a lot easier to draw a doodle with a reference, even if that reference is hmm, dirty, even if that reference is just the real item itself. Okay. So like we said, and zooming you back in so that we can get up close and personal with our books again. There we go. Cute. We could just draw the front of the book as a kind of rectangle, slightly rounded corners, possibly depending on, you know, maybe you have a particularly angular book, that's fine too. Okay, there we go. It's a book. <laughs> we could also go and add in some more detail to that though, so it looks a little bit more bookish and a little less rectangular-ish. So either some of the little details that we had before, or like we said, you could add in an elastic closure if you want to make your book more like a journal. And you could add in a little bookmark if you wanted to, poking out the bottom. Maybe make it a little bit, uh, a little bit decorative by either adding like a charm on the end of it if you want to, or you can just make it into one of those kind of ribbon bookmarks. And in terms of a ribbon bookmark, we're going to draw this a little bit bigger so you can kind of see what I mean. If this is the bottom of the book, the ribbon is effectively just two lines coming out either side and then a little triangular section cut out of it. All right, that's a very nice, easy way to draw the bookmark in. Uh, so very hard to tell here, but that does have a tiny triangular cut out of it. <laughs> so that's one way to do it. If we want to draw them slightly on their side, though, I find that the easiest way 
to draw a book on its side and like we've talked about there are certain orientations that are just going to be easier for people to draw this is the one that's probably easiest for me is drawing a kind of I'm gonna turn this over and turn it slightly for myself going with a kind of like U shape a very exaggerated U shape all right so it's kind of like a very stretched C or if you view it from this angle it's more like a very stretched U right this is going to be the top edge of the book though so the part that's kind of closest to my pen right now the line that's closest to the pen that one is going to be the top edge of the front cover of the book whereas the one behind it this guy here is going to be the top edge of the back cover of the book okay so like we talked about before, in terms of you know drawing rectangles and stuff like that, we're going to want to draw on the sides of the book and they're going to be perpendicular, okay, 90 degrees. So coming off of this corner here and this edge here, the very most tip of the weird looking U shape, the very stretched C, those ones we're going to draw down, trying to keep them in a similar kind of direction and those are going to be the sides of the book okay so this is a book kind of on an angle a book kind of like i don't know slightly tilted slightly twisted so that we can actually see the edge of it from here we effectively just want to mimic whatever shape we had at the top so you can see that like very slight gentle curve that we have we want to do that at the bottom as well Again, making sure to turn your journal in an orientation <laughs> that is going to be most useful for you. So slight curve out. That looks pretty cute. And that one is the bottom edge of the front cover. Okay. From here, though, it's not looking particularly bookish. It's kind of just looking like a folded piece of paper. So we're going to want to go and add some details in. First of all, we need to cap off this back cover. And then probably get yourself a finer pen if you're using something chonky like me and go and add in just some lines effectively to look like pages in the book all right not too hard fairly simple it's effectively just a rectangle with a little bit of curvature behind it which is kind of nice and like we had before you can go and add in like cover cover art you go draw like a little flower on it. This is now a book about horticulture. Done. Cute. Alrighty. So that's one possible uh, type of book that we could do. Uh, what you can also do is something like an open face book. Open face books I find are fairly straightforward as well. So for that one I would typically start with the center line. Of the open book mainly because it's a nice straight line. It's nice and easy to do. And then we would start after this with the kind of like top edges of each page and follow with the bottom edges of each page. So for the top edge, we just do from funnily enough, the top, a slight curve out to one side and exactly the same on the other side or as exact as you can get it without trying to do like, I don't know, and without trying to put yourself through too much pain, we don't want your noodling to be painful or stressful, right? We want this to be fun, okay? So slight curve on either side. Those will be the top edges of the book. So as if the book is sitting kind of face down and it's a little bit uh, curved out, it has gotten silent. People are concentrating. They're, they're going to draw these books. <laughs> Either that or they're just hanging out with us. Either is fine. Okay. What we're going to want to do now, now as we have the top curves of each of them, is essentially do the exact same thing on the bottom, okay? So keeping the shape very, very similar, uh, we're just going to curve it out to one side and curve it out to the other. Looking very cute. Okay. Um, from here, you can technically speaking, treat this as if you're viewing the book like <clears throat> this. Like it's face down in front of you like that. I know it's hard to see because we're zoomed in. Or you can treat it like it's facing away from you like that. Um, just depends on how you want to how you want to do it. I'm treating this like it's the internal part of a book. Mainly because I haven't really drawn a spine in here. This is more so just like the kind of like binding, I guess, of two pages that are, that are together. 
From here though, because this is not finished, we want to connect our top and bottom lines, just using some straight lines running down either side. Nice and simple. And technically speaking, you could leave it like this. You know, like th this is fine. You would look at this and be like, yeah, it's a book. I get it. Makes sense. Um, but I like to add a couple more details to it typically. Uh, what I will usually do is add in some lines that make it look like there are actually more pages than just the one we've got here. And I'm going to use squeak, says the chair. I'm going to use my finer pen for those. So, for these ones, you are effectively just drawing a little line that comes out either side, not at the very corner, slightly lower. Yeah, I know, cat distraction. <laughs> My cat chair. <laughs> it just needs to be oiled. Uh, so slightly, slightly down from those corners. I'm just going to bring it a little closer so you can see where I've drawn them. So it's not quite at the corner, it's just a little lower than that, okay? Uh, mainly because of just like the way that uh, we've drawn it in, it's like slightly viewed not straight down, but from a slight top angle. Hard to explain, but we go and put this in there. We're going to draw down from there. Taking your time with it because you want to make it so it actually looks like it's part of a page below it doesn't like blend in <laughs> you should not sit on cats it's probably probably good advice <laughs> uh, make it so that it doesn't touch the the line that you already had there um, and then we're going to just curve it from the underside to here i'm going to turn this because it's just going to be a little easier for me to actually draw um, again make sure that your notebook is in an orientation that's a, a little bit easier for you so you're coming in from that corner tip around kind of following the curve that you've drawn for yourself over to the end of the book page that we're drawing in here so we smack and similar idea on the other side so starting either here or there depending on what you want but effectively it's going to be from that middle section we smack See? looks pretty cute like we said, you can totally draw this with the same size pen that we were already using. And you can do this a couple of times if you want to kind of bulk it up as well. Uh, make it look like it's got quite a few pages behind it. But following that, I'm going to draw just an edge that's very close to it. Very close, but not quite on the same level. And curve that in in exactly the same way. It's kind of just like following the lines that you've already kind of set for yourself. And giving it a little bit of dimension. Oh gosh, it's so cute. I'm so happy with that. Yay. Yeah, sitting on cats. Zero out of ten. Do not recommend. <laughs> So that's one way that you can draw an open face book. As we said, you can also do this as if you were looking from the spine of the book, like the outside of the book. The only difference that I would probably do with that one is that rather than starting with a straight line in the middle, I would start with a small rectangle, like a fairly thin rectangle. Uh, I haven't really drawn these ones before, so I apologize in advance if it looks a bit weird. But starting with a rectangle for the spine... And then just doing effectively the same process that we just did. So curving out, curving out on either side. It is okay if your curves are not the same as each other on the left and right, but do try and make them look the same as each other on the top and bottom. So you can kind of see like this curve here and this curve here, like the top and bottom on the right hand side, they look very similar to each other but they do not look super great compared to like, like they're not the same, I guess, as the left hand side. That is fine as long as the two on the left are the same as each other. Does that kind of make sense? Alrighty. So, like we said, you just then connect those here. That looks pretty cute. But where the difference comes in for this one is drawing in the extra pages. Because this guy was kind of like, oh yeah, you know, the book is sitting flat, face open on a desk. This one's more like the book is upright like this, 
maybe with like some splayed out kind of pages type of a thing. So we're going to try and draw some splayed out pages on the other side of this book. Again, I haven't really drawn this, this um, orientation before, so if it looks a little weird, I apologize. We're effectively just drawing some lines that spurt out <laughs> from the top. It kind of looks like, I don't know, a stick with hair. <laughs> is the, probably the nicest way to, to talk about it. Uh, but effectively, just from this top edge of the spine, drawing some curved lines that come out because they're representing the top of the book pages. Once you've got all of those in, you then just draw straight lines down from the end of those lines. Yeah, straight lines down. Ta-da! It's a tiny book. Looks kind of like the little book fountain. Doodles a lot of the time are very much a trust the process type deal <laughs> because before then it was just like, okay, you're looking a little bit weird. Just like we had before though, we can go and add in some little, little details. So little lines on the spine. We can add some front of book decorations if we want to. Go bring back our flower moment. Looking very cute. Beautiful. Love that for us. Yay books. Um, let's see, other things that you can add into your kind of bookish decorative bits uh, that aren't necessarily specifically books, like we had before with the, uh, what's this guy? Like the bookmark. So the idea for this one was that this was a bookmark sticking out the bottom of a page. What you can do in terms of like box decoration, uh, that kind of thing, is do this type of design but sticking over the top of a box. So, for instance, what a lot of people would often do is that they would draw the top of the box, you know, like we draw the, the box in, just draw a box in, it's a little easier. They would draw the box in and then once the box was in they'd be like, oop, I want to have a little bit of a like ribbon banner type moment thing and then they would draw the little ribbon item on the side here. Okay, that is one way to do it. You can do it like that, no harm, no foul. What I personally prefer though is making it look like it's actually sticking over the top of the edge of the box and that requires me to put that in first. Okay, so just like we had before, as soon as something is sitting over the top of the box or you want it sitting over the top of the box, it's best to pencil in your box first so you can see where the box is going to sit and then draw that over the top element in before you actually kind of like put pens to paper with this. So what I prefer, personally prefer, personally prefer, again, don't have to do it, but I like it, uh, is when you draw in your little flag here, or like, you know, what we're kind of treating as like a little page marker or a bookmark or a book flag, is draw it so that the top edge of it is just a little bit higher than the edge of the box. Okay, you can hopefully see here, again I'll just bring you in a little bit closer, you can hopefully see that that top part of it is a little bit higher up than where the edge is actually going to end up. Okay, and this is what is going to make it look like it actually sits over the top of the edge of the box rather than just being like kind of a flat two-dimensional page flag. Not that there's any problem with that, still cute, I just want something a little bit like deluxe without a little bit, you know, without without too much effort. Okay, so now as we've got that in, that's looking pretty cute. We then just draw the page flag in as we would before. So drawing a line over the top and then that little triangular cutout at the bottom. And then we can draw the box in as we typically would. Uh, it's just not going to line up perfectly with the top of the little flag we put in because we want the flag to look like it's sitting over the top. It is purposeful and it takes a little bit more effort, but only a little bit more effort, which is kind of nice. Okay. Once you've got that in, once it's dried, then you can erase your pencil lines. Or if you're feeling adventurous, don't put pencil lines in at all. Um, once you get more comfortable, more familiar with it, you probably don't need to. Uh, but I would recommend at least starting off putting pencil lines in just to make sure that things end up where you want them to. Are we going to smudge this? Maybe. <laughs> Hopefully you can see the difference between the two. I'm going to bring bring you in a closer a little bit again. But um, 
hopefully you can see that there is kind of a difference there. And this one just looks a little bit more three-dimensional compared to this guy here. You could also add a little drop shadow if you wanted to, like if you have a light gray pen or something like that. Um, let's let's go let's go do that for, for the visual interest. Uh, bring back our ohuhus, our ohuhu marker. <clears throat> we'll see if we have a gray in here that's not too offensive. Like you don't have to do gray for a drop shadow. I just personally prefer it. So just like I always do, I like them to be to the right. Uh, it's just the one that I'm comfortable with. So we can put a little gray here and a little gray there. Again, add a little bit of dimension without too much effort. We love that for us. So cute. Kaplink. Alrighty. So, tick. Books. Is there any other bookish things that we can add to this? Um, I think that's pretty good. Um, if you wanted to put, put like a book that was lying down on its side type of a thing, um, you could probably start with, start with kind of like a box, um, so, how do we explain drawing this? There we go. It's kind of like a box on its side. I'm starting with pencil here because three dimensions drawing in the third dimension is not my strong suit. Uh, so starting with a little kind of box and then drawing like lines that come down type thing. It's a little bit harder for me to explain because it's not a, an orientation that I'm as familiar with. But hopefully you can kind of see what we're doing here. You just have to kind of play around with um, making it so that Play around with it so that then your lines are actually aligned in the way that makes the most sense for it. So for instance, this is kind of going to be like a little bit curved because it's the corners, it's a little curved. And then drawing the lines down from that. And lines coming out, kind of perpendicular-ish. And then down again. Little curve here. Cute. And then go and add in all of the little details over here. There are the pages. Looks a little bit like pages. <laughs> so just getting a little bit scribbly with it because this orientation again is not really like the one that is um what I would typically do for books because I like things to be simple and easy. So typically if I was doing books I would stick mainly with like these guys here maybe some that were slightly off kilter, and then every so often one like this. Because like we said, there are certain designs that you're going to get quite comfortable with, quite familiar with when you do your doodling, and then there are others that are a little bit more challenging, not your typical type thing. Okay, we had a question. By that, I mean we had a couple. Alrighty, so, could you do a book lying flat but open with the pages spread up? Yes, I could do this. I just need to go and have a look for a reference image <laughs> so that I can figure out what it looks like. Um, open book. So like, do you, okay, we're going to do a little scribble moment here for that, just so that then I can figure out what I want. Um, are we talking kind of like, like that kind of moment where you've got like the book pages? Eh, this is this is bad but hopefully you kind of get what I'm talking about where it's kind of like that type thing I mean again I've done this interestingly but hopefully you get what I meant is that kind of roughly what we were talking about in terms of there we go okay excellent let's figure out how to do that together because this this is a mess <laughs> but but hey like we said, a doodle is a good doodle if you can look at it and know what it is. Right now, it looks a little bit like a side, like, cross-section of a volcano, but, but, we're going to try this together. Okay, so, in terms of the 
process for this one. We're going to start in pencil because like we said, starting in pencil means that if you cock something up, there's still the ability to fix it. Uh, if you don't start in pencil, then that becomes a lot more tricky. So, hmm, huh, huh, huh. <laughs> sound like a Minecraft man. That's all right. We're going to start with the the base, I think, of the book, like the cover of the book, which is sitting kind of on the desk. And if we were making this like perfectly side angled, like kind of similar to this, if it was perfectly side angled, then you wouldn't really see very much of the cover at all. Like you'd kind of have maybe a little notch type deal in the middle for where the spine was. And then it would kind of lay flat outside of that, making sure to come a similar amount of space on either side because typically speaking the front and back cover of a book are usually the same width. I've not come across a book where that's not the case. So making sure that in terms of the dimensions that we're playing with it's roughly the same on either side which means I might need to adjust my spine. <laughs> Just get my spine adjusted so that then it sits in the middle and then we have a similar amount of distance on either side. Okay, so just so that everybody can kind of see what I'm doing here, because this obviously is a little bit of a mess. Uh, this one, what, box is where I've got my spine, and then I've got four boxes, or two centimeters, on either side that are going to be the um, actual, like, covers of the book. Okay, so that's kind of kind of what we've got here. And now as I've drawn it in pen, I feel like I should continue with it. So <laughs> we're going to use this one instead. In terms of the little uh, notch that I've got in here, this is like when you have the... Where's my book? Where's my book? Squeaky chair, squeaky chair. Hopefully you can kind of see on this guy here, um, we've got the kind of like indent and then the spine. Yeah, so this is kind of what I'm drawing on the page here. That's like the kind of indent of the spine and then the covers of the book. Okay. We've got that one. Then we need to think about the pages. So in terms of like the, the like open face book, typically there's going to be some pages on the side that you can actually like will actually just be kind of face down. So those ones are going to be like slightly inside from the cover. So that's going to be kind of like here and we'll add in some some kind of internal line work to make it look like it works after the fact i'm drawing this twice to kind of like pencil it in so i know what i'm doing and then kind of draw it in so that then it looks a little bit more reasonable so we've got the two little edges here which is kind of the pages that are sitting down rather than the kind of splayed out ones and we're also going to want to have a little circle like semi-circle in the middle because that's where the book pages are all going to be kind of bound together, if that makes sense. I'm going to draw those in, so a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Little kind of semicircle here between the, the part that the spine is going to be at. All right. Um, let's see, once we've got that, then... I feel like we're gonna have to track the book cover back slightly so that then it looks like it's slightly three-dimensional. <laughs> Not a lot. It's looking a little bit interesting so far, but hopefully you're kind of following with what I'm doing here. We'll do the same on the pencil sketch here because when I get to the pages, that's where it's gonna be the hardest. So drawing in the flat pages, the ones that aren't part of the splayed out portion, those ones should in theory once I've drawn that little part in, should in theory just kind of curve out from the middle of the spine in either direction, like that. That's not too bad. So, so far it's just kind of like two flat spaces on either side. That's all right. I can deal with that. So we draw across. Oh, there we go. That's looking cute. Because once we go and add details in, this won't look too bad. Again, remember to rotate your journal so that you can draw in an orientation that makes sense for you. 
I say it as many times as I do because I need to remind myself, okay? <laughs> it's not me thinking that like, you know, you didn't get the message the first time. It's me who did not get the message the first time. Okay, cute. Now, when it comes to the splayed out pages, I feel like we need to draw the... I'm not going to say like the biggest ones first because that's not quite what I mean. But we do need to think about like, first of all, how far up can they actually come? And second of all, uh, which ones are going to be the most visible in terms of like actually splaying the pages out? Because if you splay out the pages of a notebook, and it's very hard to show you from this angle, there are typically some pages that you can see a little bit better than others. Like ones that are kind of closer to the edges are going to be a little bit more tucked in, a little bit harder to see. Whereas the ones that are kind of in the middle, the furthest away from each other, usually you see a little bit more of those. So to start with, I'm going to map out okay if this was my spine and i said that it was two centimeters in either direction the tallest i can go up is another two centimeters okay that's the highest point for my pencil sketch that my pages can go hopefully this kind of makes sense all right because when you turn the page obviously it can only get as far away as the page is actually wide <laughs> so that is the the tallest height at which my pages are allowed to go, just to can, can kind of continue with this semi-realism. In actuality, unless I draw a page that goes absolutely straight up, it's not going to be able to come out that far anyway, right? So that's something to also keep in mind to make it look like it actually makes sense. I'm not really going to go and hit that point there, which means more likely than not, it's only going to come out maybe yay far kind of a thing, okay? So this is kind of my zone of paging, or the place at which the pages can actually be put. So, in terms of the outer, or the page that we can see the most, we'll draw him in first. So he's going to curve out from the middle, slightly curved. Okay, that one's going to be the one we see the most. So we've got a curve that comes out, another curve or pretty much right beside it that then gets capped off right so that is going to be the page that we see the most of every other page is going to be like slightly slightly less seen than him in theory we'll draw another one out to the side and draw a little line coming off the top of that and curve that one back in this one's not going to go all the way to the middle though, this one's going to go kind of into the side of the line here. So you can see what I mean, I am going to draw these in. I'm actually just going to draw it over the top of this one. Ha 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 ha. So, two curves. And the flat part, where the flat part is effectively like the side of the page. And that comes in from the middle of the book that we've kind of drawn in here. I'm going to go and draw these ones in. I've now turned my pencil sketch into the real deal. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Put that one in. I know that this is probably seeming a little bit out of order and maybe uh, not as clear as some of the other doodles, and that's because we are figuring this out together. There we go. There we go. How long do you plan on being on? Um, I don't know. Until we all get bored, I guess. <laughs> I don't have a specific time frame. I will only probably be on for another hour at the most, but we'll see. Tink. All right, this one's not done, though. Now, in terms of other pages, uh, we will just kind of splay them out as well. I'm trying to make it so that then it actually comes out the full way. And then when you get to the ones on the edge, you do need to make sure that they kind of match up with your book page. Like this guy here, if we just draw an arrow. This one, in the middle, he has not come out far enough. He looks a little bit weird, okay? Um, you do need to kind of try and make sure that they kind of keep in line with where they've been before. When it comes to the other side, I'm just going to draw like maybe one over here. And kind of go with the idea that maybe we're flipping through from... How do you flip a book? <laughs> like, yeah, this way? We're flipping like this. Yeah. Okay, so most of the pages are on this side, and then we've only got, like, one or two on that side. That's the thing. Like, when you draw this, 
it's very rare when flipping through a book that they're all going to be like perfectly, perfectly fanned out. So it kind of makes sense to only have a couple on one side and more on the other. I've lost my thin pen. I need to go draw some additional lines in here to make it look like a stack of book pages. And those ones all kind of curve in the same direction. Doesn't matter if it's not perfect, uh, but they all come from that center kind of portion go over to the side does that kind of make sense we're gonna get rid of the uh the, the pencil lines here so hopefully yeah this is a little stumpy page this is actually a dutch door uh don't be fooled <laughs> there we go get rid of all of that that looks like not too shabby for for a design that i'm not super familiar with i don't feel too bad about it <laughs> hopefully that kind of makes sense you can possibly put another like page in here there we go kind of a thing and then if you wanted to, you could add some kind of detail to the page. But oftentimes, I would probably just leave this one blank. Um, I think comparing this to my first one, not too bad. This one is a lot more kind of like tilted down. So you possibly even want to make this page even a little bit longer. There we go. Just put another one in. But this guy over here was a lot more very, very side angled. Um... This one has started to look a little bit off kilter. Hopefully that kind of kind of helps. There are probably better tutorials online than I can give you, but let's see. I know that we had another one that was book-ish. Um, da, 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 scrolling back to try and find it before we move on to something else. Let's see. I might have missed it. So if you had another book, book-ish journal type doodle request, just let me know. Um, Cause we have a couple more spaces on our little book page here. We're just gonna kind of like title this up. So book doodles, <laughs> including our puddle book, right? Making sure that we don't do puddle book, making sure that we keep things perpendicular. Um, I think that of the ones on this page, my favorites are usually just going to be the ones that are easier. So the ones that are like on the side, um, or even just like this guy, which is one that I personally find kind of easy. Alrighty, let's see. It was you! Let's see, which one was it? Could you do a book stack where you can see the covers a little? Nice. Okay, cute, cute, cute. So if we're thinking kind of like this, but in a stack type of a thing, um, we can probably do that one. Like... When I'm thinking of book stack, I'm thinking like from the side, right? Uh, hopefully we are we are talking about the same thing here. Ah, uh, let's see. I'm gonna scribble something up first to, to try and get get my head in the game. Uh, we're gonna go with like type of a deal, and that means that that one would have to be roughly yay big, and then like that type of a thing. So we go back a little bit, but not too much. Because this is just a little book, a little book cover. And then I guess those would be the pages. Let's see. Wait, have I done this weird? Yes, of course I have. And then that would be the kind of like spine edge. And that would be the kind of cover cover. So I've done it quite small. <laughs> like like small like that alrighty so if we're going with this in in a in a the way that you can actually follow because that was very messy and very scribbly so in this book stack we're going to do it so that the book on the bottom is the biggest and the book on the top is the smallest okay um so for that we're going to need to start by drawing four horizontal lines and we know how I feel about horizontal lines so I'm actually going to haha <laughs> rotate my notebook so the one on the bottom, the, the bottom stack book, the first line we're going to draw is going to be one of the widest. Okay, so I'm going to draw it about yay wide. Why not? Um, the next line we're going to draw, which is going to be, if you're thinking about it in terms of the orientation we're using, is going to be on top of that, and it's going to be the same length. Okay, so same length as the one that we just did. Put that one in. The next line we're going to do is it's going to be uh, not the same length. It's going to be slightly shorter and I'm going to do it slightly shorter on both ends. Okay, so rather than starting here and here, I'm going to go in just a little bit. 
make it there, okay? So if you're drawing this horizontally, it effectively looks like two lines that are the same width and then one that's slightly narrower from both sides. And then the last line that I'm going to do is going to be the same. It's going to be slightly narrower from both sides and on top of that. Now, these do not have to be the same width as each other. I've just drawn the same width because it's a little easier for me. But now as we have those in, we're going to actually go and draw in our kind of book covers, I suppose. And to do that, we're just going to connect each of the lines together, starting from the bottom. Now we're here. No, starting from the bottom. So this one is going to connect to the one directly above it, just using a very slight curve. Okay, very slight curve. Looks pretty cute. And same on the other side, very slight curve. That is the spine of book one. Okay. Um, then on the next one, we're going to do the same thing. It's going to connect to the line below it, but it's not going to connect to the corner. It's going to connect effectively directly below wherever it is. So directly below this guy is effectively here. That's where he's going to be connecting. Directly below this one is effectively here. That's where he'll be connecting. We're not going to connect it with a straight line. It's going to be a very slight curve. Very slight curve. Very slight curve. And then we're going to do the same for the one above it. Connecting pretty much straight down with a very slight curve. Alrighty. So this is effectively the stack of books that we had before. So similar to this guy. Except we're now going to make them slightly three-dimensional. Okay, so you do see a little bit of the top cover of the book. Now... I, again, am not very good at three dimensions, but we're going to do this together and it's not going to be too hard. I find that the easiest way for me to do third dimensions is again on the right hand side. I find everything's on the right hand side for me. Not too sure why. For this, we are going to need to draw some straight lines coming off every corner that is on a right hand side. Okay, so this corner here, I feel like I need to draw it in with pencil for you. So this corner here which is on a, a, a top right hand side. We're going to do this corner here, which is on a top right hand side. We're going to do this corner here, which is on a top right hand side. Also this one and this one. And actually this one and this one. These are all of the corners that we're going to be drawing tiny lines off of. So any kind of like corner that is exposed on this kind of angle. Like if that's the sun. <laughs> Not that we're drawing the sun in, but hopefully you can kind of see where I'm going with this. Might be a little bit tricky, but trust the process. Trust me here. Okay. So when we're drawing these little lines in, we're going to make the lines all the same direction. They're all going to be parallel to each other like we had up here. So they're all going to be in the same direction as each other. And they're all going to be the same length. And it's not going to be very long. It's just going to be the same length, not very long. So in order to do this, I am going to tilt my journal so that then the direction of the line is going to be essentially you know, straight up and down for me. It makes it a little easier. So I've decided this is going to be the direction. You do not have to tilt your notebook. I just find it easier. And we're going to go and draw little lines that are all roughly the same length and in effectively the same direction. And this is why I've tilted my notebook because I find it a little bit easier to um, draw things in this like so that then they're all in the same direction if they're all straight, if that kind of makes sense. So all those little lines have gone in. You'll have seen that all of the ones that are along this kind of top edge, now that I've rotated it, all of those ones don't actually connect to anything. But these two that we had here have connected to the book on top of it. Kind of makes sense. Looks like a little bit of a pyramid. It's kind of it's kind of cute. Alrighty. So now as we've got those in, now that's looking pretty swell, we effectively just need to mimic whatever joined the corners before. So these two corners were joined by a straight horizontal line, which means that these two corners are going to be joined by a straight horizontal line. Uh, I'm going to draw this in for you, or attempt to, in a way that doesn't hopefully make us want to cry. <laughs> so this corner and this corner are going to get joined by a straight line, just like the last one was. Uh, similar idea for these ones as well, like these two corners were joined by a curve. Looks pretty cute. Alright. 
this part here, the internal part here is a little bit hard to explain, so I'm just going to draw it really slowly and hopefully you can kind of follow what I'm doing, all right? Um, I have effectively forgotten to include some of the additional corners that we need to draw in. I apologize for that. But they are this corner here and this corner here, the kind of parts where the books on top touch the book beneath it. We effectively need those to have those little lines as well. So that then we can join the corners in the same way that they would have been joined before. Again, I'm trying to just draw it quite slowly so you can kind of see what it is because there is a very good reason Jess was not an art teacher. She doesn't explain art very well. Does that kind of make sense? I think that of the drawing that we've done here, the one that looks probably the strangest at the moment is that corner there because he is slightly off kilter. He should have been tilted a little bit further down, but in general, it's not looking too bad. Okay, so now as those parts are in, uh, again, just go back and rewatch it because it's really hard to explain because I am not an art teacher. But we're going to go and draw in some of those internal lines to make things look a little bit cute. I think one of the things that I've probably done here, which would have made it look a little bit better, is if these edges were actually possibly curved the other way. But that's fine. All right, that looks pretty cute though. It's not looking too, not looking too shabby. Let's see. Probably has to do with the handedness. Yeah, possibly. It, it's it's easier to draw in certain directions. Let's see. I oh, know. Tink. <laughs> so now as we've drawn the books, we can go in and critique them. Uh, if I were to do this again. This line here would end up being a little bit further over, so it would be kind of a little bit more perpendicular to the one perpendicular, get out, a little bit more parallel to the one on the other side, so that one looked a little bit odd. I would also probably draw these corners a little bit differently, and rather than curve them the way that I've done here, I would curve them in. Uh, so then it would end up looking... Do I have a spare piece of paper here? I'm going to draw them over here. So it would probably end up looking a little bit more like the same kind of curve on either side. Yeah. And then draw them in with a horizontal. And then draw the diagonal parts like we had before. That one is always going to be off kilter for me. like that kind of a thing. This is poorly explained, but hopefully you kind of get what I meant. <laughs> it's a cake. It kind of looks like a cake. There we go. There's a candle. There's another candle. There's another candle. Happy third birthday for us. <laughs> I think that looks a little bit cuter. Yeah, a little square cake. And then like we said before, you can add in like the little decorating bits. You know, add in the little kind of book-ish spine designy bits, make it a little, a little bit cute. Ta-da! Not too shabby. I think it looks a little bit better when you curve this line in that direction, but that's the general gist of it. This is what we get for doodling on the fly. Okay, so in terms of next kind of category of things. I think that typically uh, things that are really super easy to draw would probably be like botanical type things. We're not going to do too many of them because I know there are heaps of good tutorials online for botanicals, but we're going to have a look at a couple, okay? Uh, mainly because, as said, they're just like easy. Uh, the nice part about things that are botanicals as well is that they are organic shapes, which means that if they end up looking cattywampus, it does not really matter because they're supposed to be organic. They're supposed to be, you know, a little bit different every single time. That's part of their charm. So, easiest botanicals uh, would be, personal opinion on this, uh, is just going to be like, yeah, generic pot plants are fun to draw. Huzzah. I feel like we need to just start with the pot plant. Um, easiest pot plant is starting with a rectangle. And you do not have to draw it quite as thick as mine 
is, but this is effectively the lip of the pot, right? Uh, from the edges of this, not particularly like the corners, but slightly in from the corners, slightly in, you are then going to draw the underneath side of the pot. Uh, for this, it is effectively, I don't know what the shape is called, somebody will correct me. I'm going to call it a rhombus, I'm pretty sure it's not. Okay, slightly tape it in a little bit and then flat based. All right, doesn't need to be a lot. If you draw it too far in, it ends up looking a little bit strange, unless that's the style that you're specifically going for, because again, these are your doodles, do as you will. Okay, nice, easy. That is the pot. Every doodle that we do from here on out can be put in a pot. I'm not going to draw the pots out. <laughs> a trapezoid. There we go. <laughs> you guys know. You guys know your shapes. Geometry was not my favorite type of math, to be completely honest. Um, it existed, but yes. So easy, easy doodles. Let's see. I find that the easiest type of botanicals are the ones where instead of drawing an actual stem, you just draw a line. So this is the stem. Boom. Done. <laughs> so I'm going to go with ones that effectively have very little leaves. So they effectively look like little teardrop kind of shapes. Um, when it comes to drawing teardrop shapes, I always find starting at the point is easiest. And for this case, the point is going to touch the stick. Now I'm going to want all of my little teardrops to kind of come out and up from here. So little teardrop to one side, little teardrop to the other side. Similar idea, just working our way down the stem or down the stick or down the line. Trying to maintain the kind of general size so that then they don't look a little bit weird. See, a rhombus has two sets of parallel sides all the same length. There we go. I knew it wasn't a rhombus. I'm going to talk and schmack out here. Just like we had with all of our other doodly bits, you can add more decoration if you want. So you can add in like a little uh, internal, like, what's the word? I'm going to call it a spine. It's like a leaf spine, you know, if you want to. If you want to get a little bit more decorative with it, you don't have to though. Okay. So, that is one very simple plant-esque kind of doodle. Uh, what you could do if you wanted to is draw similar type thing, uh, but make it a little bit more kind of like lavender-esque. So that means that all of these little things are going to be a lot closer to each other and you'll probably color it in with purple. So we're going to make them a lot closer to each other. And we're just working our way down, making my way downtown, walking fast, faces past, and I'm homebound. The nice part is that depending on what you color this in with, you could treat it kind of like a fern. If you like kind of colored it in like green or maybe brown, or you can treat it like a lavender if you color it in with purple. Nice and easy. Um, you also don't have to do it the whole way down as well. Um, you could do it only in parts. So we do like the top part here and then maybe a couple more here and then a couple more here, etc. And then if we go and get out our purple, little purple number, then we can color those in, so on and so forth make a little, little purpley, clean off my pen because I'm using a paper mate. What you can also do, if you do not want to do this uh, with black, thick kind of pen, you can also just go in with the colored pen itself. So in terms of the Ohuhu, they have a fine tip on one end, like a fine liner and a brush tip on the other. So if we do the stem in green, and then this is what I kind of quite like about the brush tip marker is that you just touch the tip of the marker to the stem and then kind of press down. Yeah. So press down kind of like that. Yeah. Hopefully you can kind of see what I mean. I know we're a little bit further away, but it, it's a nice way to add kind of the petals and such without actually having to draw them yourself. You just touch the tip and press down. I know that I'm over the top of where you're working here. I'll see if I can do it with my left hand. Eee. Touch the tip, press down. See, it's so easy I can do it left-handed. <laughs> so it just gives you these kind of little uh, kind of petal 
esque shapes without actually having to draw them in yourself. And you can draw little flowers with them. Ain't that the cutest? There we go. Draw in the center of the flower, etc. <laughs> So that is one possibility in terms of your uh, floral-esque little bits. You don't have to do it with black line work. Um, I'll try and make these a little bigger so that then they, they stand out a little bit. Odd numbers works best for petal too. Yes, 100%. Um, I find that my personal preference when it comes to a flower is usually to draw five. So circle in the middle and then one, two, three, four, five. There we go. Draw a stem in my little pot. Looking cute. Some little leaves. Perfect. Done. <laughs> Let's see. I need a drink. A tink. Alrighty. You struggle with botanicals for page corners or around your boxes of text. Can we do any for that? For sure. Um, so, I often find that a nice way to do a kind of like page like a, a botanical around a border is to make it look like I know it's such a lonely flower. <laughs> wow. Um, I I quite like doing what looks kind of like woven type things uh, is something that you can do. Uh, so for instance, if we get out a, we'll just do the same green from before, and draw kind of like a wiggly kind of line. So here's my little vine type looking deal. Uh, so you can do your page border or your box border so that it kind of like cuts through part but then not cut through the next part so it cut through but then that one sits over the top and then it cut through but then that one sits over the top and it cuts through but then that one sits over the top type of a deal uh, you can usually do it a lot nicer if you're taking a little bit more time with it we're using a finer pen to make it look like it sits there a little bit nicer it's one possibility if you want to kind of like wrap it around the uh, edge of the box and then similar to what we did before you can just go and add in little petals and stuff by using the brush marker if you wanted to add in a couple little florally bits on either side just kind of cute they look like little hearts don't they they're very sweet <laughs> um, what I would probably possibly do from this point, depending on how much effort I really felt like I wanted to to put in here, is uh, go and outline things so that then they stand out a little bit better, so that you can kind of see the wrap around a little bit better. Does that make sense? It's like wrap around a stick. Whee! It's not super necessary, but it's a little bit cute. There we go. So this was something that I did in... I'm going to go find you an example so that it makes a little bit more sense. Uh, which journal? That's a good question. <laughs> I think it was this one. So I did a similar type of thing when I did September in here I just kept it very very small very very simple um, so I didn't do a lot of kind of like floral bits on it mainly because all of my floral bits were in here for this month um, yeah let's see flower snack indeed it does look like a flower snack so option of making them hang like a garland along the top and bottom for sure we can do something like that that'd be kind of cute uh, let's see if we're thinking like just corner design, if I was doing, like if this is the corner of a box and I wanted to keep it very, very simple, I would do you know, a little yellow center or like whatever color you want to do it. And then do little petals coming out of that would be kind of cute. So. That kind of a little little floral moment for the corner which is kind of cute what you could also do is make that the actual corner of the box uh, so rather than drawing the corner of the box in that corner we just draw that in the little yellow here and get out a different color because why not we're gonna do orange so one towards the middle and then one on either side 
and possibly even put some more extra ones in if you want to. Like make that kind of the, the corner of the box instead. So that then the box kind of comes up to there. It's kind of like capped off with a little floral. It'd be kind of cute as well. Uh, garland. Do I know how to draw a garland? <laughs> Do I know what a garland looks like? That's a better question. Again, looking up for reference. Ha 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 ha. What does a garland look like? Alrighty. So like a little kind of like wreath that is not circular because it has an end. <laughs> That makes that makes kind of sense. Yeah, so it's like this, but kind of I, I realize I'm gesturing with my mouse, not with my hand. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like, oh yeah, it's like this, and I'm like, nobody can see that, Jess. Nobody nobody can see that. Yeah, kind of similar to that, but like along the top. So kind of like a hanging type moment. Um that makes kind of sense. So it's like like a kind of thing. And then like it would like pop back over the top over somewhere else, kind of a thing. I'm drawing this very quickly so I can kind of see the, the general idea that I'm thinking of in my mind here, in my mind hole type thing. And then if we just draw in some general bushiness. Shake, shake, shake. I realize I'm like shaking everything when I do that. Shake, shake, shake. I would probably not use a limey green here. I would probably use something a little bit nicer. And then on top of this, or before you put this in, going in and putting in the extra little bits and pieces. There we go. We're just adding some dark green here for detail lines more than anything else. You could probably actually add some other stuff in there too. But let's see. Did a waterfall garland of flowers over some boxes and one layout. That's pretty. If you haven't already shared it with us in the Discord, I'd be very curious to see that. Because, yeah. Alright. So, that's looking pretty cute. Uh, we've got a couple little ideas there, which is quite sweet. Let's see. Um, favorite pens for doodling. Uh, we kind of talked about this at the start. I think that mainly it's like the Tombow Fudenosuke is probably my preference. Um... That's for like larger doodles, uh, but yeah, I think that's probably that's probably the one that I like the most. Let's see. <laughs> we also want some more fairly simple line work esque kind of doodles. Alrighty, one one floral doodle in particular that is quite easy. I do not remember the name of it, but. It's, I think it's maybe like a Macintosh rose. I'm going to call it that. And then I can get reamed out in the comments. It's cool. But effectively for this one, you start with a circle. If you don't have the ability to draw a circle yourself, you can use a circle stencil. It makes it a lot easier. So we're just going to put a little circle here. There we go. Here. Okay. And then we effectively just starting on the outside, we're going to kind of cut it into segments effectively okay so we take one side we draw a slightly curved line we cut it like this looks pretty cute and then from here we do another cut not from the corner though i'm pretty sure is it oh it could be from the corner if you do it in like a triangular okay it's from the corner so from here we cut it across kind of like we were cutting it into triangles but rather than going back to the initial point we go slightly onto the line we already drew in. So it kind of looks like this. Yeah? And then we're effectively just spiraling that around uh, into fairly large chunks. Fairly large pieces. Okay? And then you can go and add in a couple leaves. Nothing fancy. Eh. If you draw these smaller, they do look cuter, but it's a very simple way to draw a type, like a rose-esque type deal. Um, I would pr pretty much always recommend, if you're going to be doing it with the flare, go in with your colour first, because otherwise you have to try and very carefully colour around things, which isn't isn't as fun. Uh, you could colour in different segments with different colours if you wanted to, kind of make it look like a little, uh, what's the word? I'm saying, I keep wanting to say water glass, that's not what I mean. Stained glass window type thing, which is pretty cute. Uh, and then colour in each of those 
slightly different color but still like within the same color family but that is one possible way as said I would probably start with just drawing the color in first because then you don't have to worry about muddying your color it makes it a little easier and then you can just draw the lines over the top and that kind of like spiral type deal which is a little pretty cute it's not like it's obviously very stylized it's obviously not a uh, type of rose that is going to be you know super realistic looking by any stretch of the imagination but it is a uh, nice way to to do something that's fairly simple all right um if you wanted to draw a rose that was a little bit more a little bit more uh, reasonable you can kind of start with the middle section instead so drawing kind of a similar thing to what we've done here but just very very little and then draw some kind of like curved petals around the outside that just kind of overlap each other a little bit and work your way out from the middle there just making sure that things don't perfectly line up as you go around does it look a little bit like a cabbage that's okay we can make it a little cabbage theme and again color it in yeah um, so for this one if we take it a little bit slower you kind of start with a circle in the middle and then you kind of like cut that circle like in half or something like that it doesn't really matter it's really small um, and then from here you're going to want to start curving petals out so if we start at the top curve it out to the side do a little kind of curly little moment and then curve it back in and around and down so it kind of looks like it's like got a little wing then with the next one you can come out at like the same point if you want to curve it out to the other side curl it around but don't necessarily finish it off at exactly the same point it doesn't really matter if you do it's like in the very middle when it comes to the next petal though you do not come out of the same point all right otherwise you will end up looking like this kind of a thing with your flower which I mean into itself is a very fun design to draw but it's not really what we're looking for here okay um, instead you're going to want to curve the next petal out coming off one of the middles middle ish of the other petals maybe not like smack bang in the middle slightly off kilter like maybe here and you curve it out and around and it joins up with the other petal and you just kind of keep doing that kind of thing going around curving off of a petal that's already there wiggling around it's all right if it's not perfect because it's an organic shape and you obviously don't want to go too far with it like you don't want to start doing like a flower that's like this big that you started this small it might look a little bit odd but hopefully that kind of makes sense um that was kind of a similar style to what i did for the one that i showed you before it's just that instead of doing it with a black pen i used um yeah, I used uh, just the brush tip of a Tombow, I'm pretty sure, and just did varied kind of like splotches. It looks a little bit interesting. It's not as rose-like as other roses probably look, but it's a flower, all right? And that's what we're aiming for here. We're aiming for, hey, I look at that, I can see that it's a flower, and that's okay. We like that for us, all right? So, other possibilities. Love that for us. Let's see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, another type botanical-esque kind of thing that we can do super simple is like an acorn so you start with a kind of a rectangle but it's like rounded on the edges and slightly curved in the middle all right so this is the kind of like top of the acorn band type deal and then at a certain point in the middle i'm going to draw myself a little guideline you're going to curve down from either side to that point so curve from here to here here to here of course acorns are aggressive and they have that little nubbin you don't have to draw that in um from here you also want to draw like the little kind of stick that comes off the top of them and then usually in this kind of part here you draw like maybe some little, like, little cross hatching type deal to make it look kind of acorny little cute little acorny bit love that for us let's see can anybody be in the discord yes everybody can join the discord we love having people in the discord please come join the discord uh there's a link to that in the description box otherwise you can go to https colon slash slash bit dot ly slash jcc discord uh that one is harder to follow though it's in the description box i would just jump into there <laughs> 
<laughs> so acorns looking cute uh what else can we do something else that's easy so again remember we're going for easy doodles here like we could go for some of those like hardcore maple leaf looking things that i cannot draw at all remotely um but that's not what we're trying to do we're trying to do things that are you know manageable easy uh you could do something like an oak leaf kind of thing so you draw the stem of the oak leaf and then it kind of curves out and out and over and then does the same on the other side out and out and over and if you do a lot of these kind of things like smaller and a variety of different colors it can look quite cute yeah <laughs> it, it can look quite cute yeah succulents are just weirdo blobs sometimes i know right the ones the succulents that i find the cutest to look at but the most difficult to draw if we kind of draw a little another little pot moment in here there we go there's a little pot are the ones that kind of like they look like a mustache <laughs> like, in terms of the way that their leaf structure is i can't draw a mustache so they kind of look like a little mustache coming out of the center of the pot so if we flick it over and flick it over i find these ones tricky to draw but i find that when once they're all in they look quite cute but i can't really draw them myself yeah, lots of moustachings. Moustache. Moustache. And then the top. There we go. This is like, like the zebra. The zebra looking ones, which are kind of cute. There we go. I'll just draw some little lines in there so that then you cover over, cover over my bad line work. But anywho. Yeah, yeah, they're quite cute. It's one of those things, right? Like, I'm going to go grab you another example because we love examples. Let's see. Which journal was this one in? I... I think it was in this one, possibly. Okay, yes, maybe. Yes, yes, okay. For example, this guy here, okay? So these, in theory, are quite easy to draw. Uh, did they take me a hot minute? Yes, indeed, yes, they did, because again, I get a little bit persnickety and I want things to look really. I'm very particular about the way things look in my journal. Uh, that is certainly a trait of mine. So while these are in theory easy, that does not mean that they took me not very long because there was a lot of draw and erase and then draw and erase and draw and erase. The easiest ones to probably do are the ones that look kind of like algae <laughs> like, or like seaweed. Uh, those ones are probably the easiest. Whereas these ones, which are probably my favorite ones, were... They took a lot more time. They were a lot more time consuming because I wanted to get the leaf shape exactly the way that I wanted it. Something that is super easy to do though, uh, are something like these guys, <laughs> Christmas baubles, right? They're literally just circles. The number of things that you can do with circles is, is impressive, right? So if you get yourself a circle stencil, like we've shown in this video already, and, and want to do different things with circles, that, that is super easy doodling. And you can totally, find you know 12 or more doodle idea what doodle idea theme ideas that revolve around circles much much easier Alrighty, how do you get those things you're supposed to be drawing from one side to the other my doodles always come out lopsided yeah i know right that one's really tricky too this is why i usually start in pencil because lopsidedness is very much a thing um i find also though that if you're using something with a dot grid um, use the dot grid to give you guidelines. So similar to what we did with this guy over here, like once I'd drawn out one side, I said, okay, you are four boxes long. The other side needs to be four boxes long. Um, that's typically, typically what I would, uh, would I do with those things where I'm trying to make it so that both sides look kind of similar, uh, using my pencil to map out roughly where things start or end so that then I can make the shape a little bit easier, give myself some guidelines. Mm, tricky tricky <laughs> so let's see we have gotten our botanical-esque kind of doodly bits in at least some of them like most of the time as long as it looks like a leaf it's okay the one that I'm doing for my journal theme at the moment is nice and easy that one I'm doing with a Tombow Fudnoski um, but that one effectively you just start with a nice long kind of wiggly curve Whee. and that is like the backbone or the stem of the plant and then depending on which 
end you end up at, whichever end is the end, I'm going to say it's this one. You just draw a kind of teardrop-esque kind of shape. Whereas last time we did it so that the point of the teardrop was attached to the stem and ended up with very rounded looking leaves, this one is the other way around. Okay, so this one is the, the kind of rounded part is at the base and the, the tip is further away. Okay, so we draw a kind of line that comes off because that'll end up being the tip. And then from the base, you round it out and then draw towards it like a little teardrop and similar idea on the other side. I will say that like if you think about a teardrop shape, right? So like if we just draw a little teardrop over here. And we take that teardrop and we cut it in half from the tip down to the base. You can see that one side is kind of like a little S bend kind of a thing. So it bends like that. Whereas the other side is just a gentle curve. It bends like that. Okay. So that's kind of what I'm trying to keep in mind as I draw these leaves in. One side is going to look like the S bend. One side is just going to be a gentle curve. Yep. So the middle part here we're going to draw it out and around like a little s and then the other side is just a gentle curve and we do that in a variety of places down the plant katink curve it back katink curve it back and we'll do one here why not katink curve it back it's also good to note that when it comes to the S portion of this, I usually draw it on whichever side is curving in. So like this is the inside curve of that center line. That is where I will draw the S part. And wherever the outside of the curve is, that's where I'll just draw the kind of like regular curved line. <laughs> Katink. Yep. This is how we draw things. And then when it comes to uh, coloring this in, I've just been using like a darker shade of green on one side and a paler shade of green on the other. Uh, you know, just for some visual interest. Because a lot of the time, like, you don't have to do super decorative, detailed doodles in your planner to make it look nice. You can do something quite similar and then get a little bit more creative with your coloring aspect of it. Um, I will say that I'm going to pick out a green at random here, so if it doesn't look like it matches, it's not my fault, it's the pen. The fates did this to me. <laughs> so. There we go. We'll just colour those in two different shades to make it look a little bit interesting. I also don't have to use green. Make sure that my pen's cleaned off because it is messy from touching the paper mate. And then what I've also been doing, and I'm going to use a Tombow for this one, specifically because it has a bullet tip rather than a fine liner. On the other side or in the various gaps, I've just been drawing some little lines kind of come out of this with little little balls on sticks effectively on the other end and it's been looking quite visually effective i think uh it's not super difficult i've been able to do it a lot of the time just free handing which has been quite nice but when you do this and can kind of compare it with um compare it come on complement it pair it just pair it not compare it pair it with like craft paper elements or stuff like that it can end up looking quite cute so that one's something to, to keep in mind. For instance, okay, this one here, obviously we've done quite quick together just to show you the, the general idea or concept. But if we jump into my actual journal where I, you know, take a little bit more time and, and spend a little bit more mental energy, I think that it looks quite pretty. You know, it's not tricky, but it's it looks good. That's what we're aiming for here. Not tricky, but looks good. Ponk. Let's go have a look. So, that looks pretty cute. We love that for us. Ra ra ra. Okay. One, one more botanical -y bit. And then we're going to move on to something else. Simplicity can be the most effective. Deceptively easy. Exactly. Um, 
So another type of obviously like most of the botanicals we've been looking at here are kind of like above water botanicals. One of my favorite types of botanicals though <laughs> are underwater botanicals or like seaweed. Seaweed is so easy to draw um, and thus I really enjoy doing it pretty much any time I do an underwater theme. So we are going to start with a curved line. Squiggle, squiggle, squiggle. All right. Uh, you know, pointing in whichever direction you want, but I also do love um, just having them all kind of pointing up. From here, what you're going to want to do is draw an additional squiggly line that intersects or kind of cuts through the first one. Okay, so starting at the same point, because this is like the top of the seaweed, it's going to come kind of like out one side, but then it's going to abruptly cut through and cut through and cut through and cut through and go down again. All right, so pretty much any kind of point that it turns or twists, that's where you're going to end up with an intersecting point. Um, and this effectively gives it that, uh, what's the word? It, it, it makes it look like it's moving almost. Uh, it gives it flow. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it that way. It gives it flow. Um, so from here, what you can do is either go in with the same size pen and add an additional line just on the other side. So for instance, the second line we did the curve came out this side. We can do the same thing on the other side. Uh, just making sure to cut it roughly at the same point. Or if this is too much effort, which, you know, that's fine. It's cool. We wanted to keep this easy for ourselves. Um, what you can do is instead, I will just draw it over here. And or whatnot. Just go in with a thinner pen and draw a line in the middle. Okay. This is effectively the kind of like spine of the, uh, what is this thing called again? Seaweed? Seaweed spine. Um, you could just leave it with just the two if you don't want to draw the spine in. It's just like, you know, another additional line kind of thing that you can use to, to add some visual interest. And you can add some little shadows and stuff in there if you want to. You could also use this for something like a ribbon theme if you don't want to do seaweed. Because, uh, you know, seaweed is maybe an acquired taste. Maybe if you're doing an underwater theme, seaweed would make sense. But you could do a similar type thing with just the uh, one kind of thing. We I'm just doing a whole bunch of things here. Where it's like effectively a ribbon instead of, of a seaweed. But... It can look very, very good, especially if paired with like, you know, a couple little bubbles or stuff like that to make it look like it's underwater type thing. So if we go and find you again, an example, because we love examples. Where did we do this one? You were in this one, this, this notebook here, February. <laughs> seaweed so in this this example here you can see that we've gotten a little bit like craggly with the seaweed rather than doing a very very smooth line we've done it a little bit more wiggly a little bit more kind of like shaky with the pen um but they all kind of tend upwards in the same direction uh and then the little circles for the bubbles and stuff as well to just give it a little bit more like underwater kind of vibes other ones that were very simple from this one are this guy here because it's effectively just a bunch of little rectangles stacked on top of each other, okay? Each of these elements by themselves, fairly simple to do, some of them more simple than others, um, but when you bring them all together it ends up looking quite good. <laughs> In my personal opinion. <laughs> Oftentimes though I use lettering instead of doodling to add decoration though so having a look at this guy because this one's quite easy to do as well so we're gonna we're gonna t tuck that in also for this one if we zoom in a little bit more and turn that off what year is february from uh that is from 2019 so just a just a just a hot minute ago um for doing the kind of stacked rectangle one you start with the general outline of your plant like we're gonna just make it branch off here kind of a thing make a big branch there and once you have the general outline then you go and add in all of the little boxes okay so starting at the base it's just a little box type deal and then for the next one it builds off that box so we just drew another little box 
and another little box. This is where it's branching, so we're going to want to have like one box off to one side, one box off to another side type thing, and another little box, and another little box. Then it branches, so we're going to need another box over here, and a box over there, and another little box, and another little box. <laughs> Hopefully you kind of get the idea and I don't need to keep saying and another and another and another. Um, when you get to the end you can just kind of cap it off with a little triangle rather than a little box. So kind of as if it was you know, continuing to grow. Uh, box, box, boxes in two varying directions. Where they split. There we go. So really it's just a bunch of those little boxes again that you kind of stack on top of each other but it ends up looking kind of kind of visually effective especially if you take your time with it and you're not rushing through it like i am here <laughs> that was five years ago now a few of those don't really count for you wow <laughs> yeah yeah um time flies when you're having fun and also just you know in general let's say I think that looks pretty cute. All right, we are going to do a page of eclectic isms because obviously so far we have done boxes. We zoom out, we'll just have a have a zoom out. Come along, come along. Uh, so boxes, book cake, trialing, books, planty bits, and now we're on to something completely different. Um, now we're going to do something. Let's let's have a think. I know that there were some requests. Deb had some. Uh, we'll see if we can find something simple for for those ones because I think that some of them are probably going to be like outside of my wheelhouse. Let's see. A cat, a rabbit, a panda, a stack of papers, a ruler, a pencil, a pen. Okay, let's start with the simple ones. Let's do a ruler. Okay, so for the ruler, we're going to use a ruler. <laughs> Just trace it. No, okay. The nice part about the ruler is that it is effectively just a rectangle with notches in it. We love that for us. Okay. Uh, hard to see on there. There we go. We'll chuck them over here. So for a ruler, it is, as said, just a rectangle. You can use your dot grid to help you draw the rectangle, which is nice. You could also rule in the ruler if you want to. I'm just doing it with, like, you know, freehanding it. Um... From here, you just need to put in some little lines on the side, making sure that they are fairly evenly spaced. And what I would also probably do is put in some smaller ones in between those, kind of similar to what you have on a typical ruler. So for instance, this guy here, where like the numbered lines are longer, whereas the internal lines are a little shorter. So there we go. It's a ruler, done. Uh, you can add in a little barcode on the ruler if you want to, but you don't need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you could probably look at that and know that it was a ruler and that would be fine. Alrighty, when it comes to a pencil, uh, pencil's a nice one too. So that one is effectively just the sides, which are straight. Then a triangle at the base for the actual kind of like tip of the pencil. You probably also want to cap off that triangle with whatever I know colored pencil you've got you could use an actual kind of color here if you want to I'm just going to use black because it's easier when it comes to the other end of the pencil we're going to want to draw a band just using like maybe some slightly curved lines and also a slightly rounded rectangle at the top you don't have to have an eraser on your pencil, but it just, it feels right. It just feels right. And I'm going to color that in pink because it's like typical pink eraser type deal. If you're going with what I consider to be a, I don't know, typical color of pencil that you might get for a graphite pencil, then I would probably color the body in yellow. So we would color that in yellow, but not all the way up, just to this line. Okay, if you do not trust yourself to only color up to the line, then you can draw the line in if you want to. There we go, a little separating line there. And then I would probably draw some stripes in. Ta-da! Tiny pencil, super cute! Am I at a new desk? No, this is a piece of paper. <laughs> but it means that there's better contrast between this and the notebook, so I find that you can see the notebook a little bit better, which is why I'm trialing it out. I think that uh, it just makes it a little bit easier to see where the pages start and stop. Um, so we'll see if I keep it, but 
And that's what we're doing at the moment. So we've got the pencil. In terms of a pen, a pen is pretty similar. I mean, you can start to try and get like very specific and draw like, I don't know, uh, mild liners are ones that people draw quite, quite often. Uh, so drawing it in with a little kind of curved top and stuff and uh, making a little cap and whatever. It's very cute, but we're going to go, we're going to go simple. Though before we go simple, ha ha ha, tink, there we go. Thank you. I'm glad that you are enjoying the, the new background. I'm, I'm, I'm getting used to it because <laughs> I'm not used to having this on my, on my desk. So a little bit interesting. Let's see. Papermate Flare felt tip pens. Yeah. Yeah. This is a, a Papermate Flare pen that I've got here. I think somebody just asked what pen I was using. But. So I'm mainly using it because it's a nice thick black line, which means that you guys can actually see what I'm doing because otherwise it, it can be a little bit tricky. Um, in terms of a biro pen, all right, we're gonna do the scribble pad here so that I can figure out what I'm doing before I try and tell you. So, eh, and then pen bit, and then like maybe a clip on the side. It really depends on the shape of the pen, doesn't it? Because I would typically, how do I usually draw a pen? I usually draw, I always draw my pens and pencils on an angle to start with, uh, and then maybe a band, and then like a clip that comes down. That's usually how I would draw one. So we're going to draw one that kind of looks a little bit like this. It doesn't really need to have that part there though, so not that part. Alrighty, this is going to be very similar to the pencil, <laughs> just slightly different. Um, in terms of this one though, because we're going to have something that like sits over the top, we're going to start with pencil. So drawing in our rectangle and then the tip, which is more like triangular shaped. When it comes to the back end, we're just going to draw a kind of rounded back like that. And we're going to draw ours with a kind of clip, but more specifically a clip that is attached with a kind of rounded metal ring. So very similar to the pencil, we're going to have that rounded band, but this rounded band is going to be attached to a clip. We're just going to draw the clip in at the moment like this. Kind of just another little rectangle on the side. These are our yeah, drawing a pen with a pencil. How dare she? This is our guiding lines. We love guiding lines. Now, if we have a look at an actual pen, not the pen that I have in my hand, it doesn't count. Don't be fooled by the rocks that I got. All right, so here's a pen. This is a Leuchtturm pen. Uh, for the bullet journal company. I don't know if you can see that. It says bullet journal on it. Boom. Anyways, so this pen obviously has like the kind of barrel of the pen and then a metal top along with like, you know, actually the kind of pen nib itself. So I think we're going to do a cap, like capped off section here as well, similar to what we did for the pencil, uh, just because that's what this pen has and I'm going to use you as my reference. You are my reference pen. As we said, always get yourself a reference. It makes life easier. <laughs> so we're going to draw the triangular tip and the tip of the pen, just like we had before. We're going to draw the vertical sides looking very cute. When we get to the loop though, I'm stopping because I want it to come slightly further out on either side. So it kind of looks like it's wrapped around it. You could also in theory do that with a pencil, but I didn't want to. Doesn't need to be a lot, just a little bit. And then the end of the pen, which you can either draw as like a capped off straight thing or I'm doing it slightly rounded. Then when it comes to this side piece, the side piece, uh, we're going to want to curve out around the top and down and then back towards the pen but we don't want it to leave it just there because that looks a little bit strange typically when you have the edge of this if we kind of bring it in so you can kind of see it you see how it obviously touches here but then it has a gap in the middle we want to draw the pen gap okay that's what we're going to draw in now so it touches the side of the pen here slightly curves back try and get it so you can actually see what i'm doing slightly curves back comes back up Ta-da! 
Now, depending on what type of pen you're using, it's going to be a, you know, whatever kind of color. Um, I am going to color this one in with blue. It's going to be a blue pen. Is that a blue? Yes. Thank you. Blue. And we're just going to color in the barrel of the pen and the top as well. And then if you want to, you can color in other parts as well. Like if you have like a pale kind of grayish color, you know, pale gray, you could color in the, the metal part there, the pale gray. Or if you wanted to use like a silver gel pen or something like that, it'd be kind of cute. Looks pretty good. I like it. I'm happy. Alrighty. <laughs> First it was the book gap, now it's the pen gap. Exactly. Alrighty. So we're going to do this one because I know that it's easy. Okay, there we go. Can we draw bees? Yes. Um, in terms of bees, I would start with a little bee face, which is like a squashed oval. Okay. Little bee face. Uh, and then I would draw little bee wings. And little bee wings, effectively, if we turn this around, because this, this is the head. Yeah, and the body's going to be back here. Little bee wings effectively look like a heart in my opinion. Um, I'm just going to flip the book upside down so that you can kind of see what I mean. So if we take this and we draw a little heart that comes off of the bee, effectively looks like that, but because I've drawn him this way, it's going this way. <laughs> so one little kind of curve out to one side, coming in, and a little curve to the other side, looking out. Okay. If you were drawing a very sad daisy with only two petals, this is perfect. You're done. But we're not doing that. We're drawing a little bee. Um, I've decided that I want my little bee to have a little antenna. So I'm going to draw two little antenna outside. Looking pretty cute. And then in terms of the little bee body, uh, all you really need to do is draw a curve between each of the wings. So again, trying to make sure that you can see it. A little curve comes out there. Oh, perfect. Little fat bee. Love him. Now, bees are known for having stripes, so we're going to need to put some stripes in. But because I don't want to muddy my yellow pen, we're going to make sure that I've gotten rid of... Yes, using my finger as blotting paper. We're going to erase this, even though it's already smudgy, because this paper is kind of coated. Maybe it was not the best one to, to pick for what we're doing here together, but it's okay. We're going to colour in the bee body before we put in the bee stripes, just to make it a little easier on myself to not muddy my colour. So taking your yellow, if you're going with yellow bees, color in the little bee body. So cute, so cute. And if you want to, you can color in the little bee wings. I am going to color them in with like a pale blue type color. How dare you? How dare you say he looks like a firefly? It's exactly the same as the firefly design. It's literally the same thing. <laughs> you're onto it. There we go. Little pale blue for the wings. Looking pretty cute. And then we're going to want to draw the stripes in. Now, the jig is up. We've already given away the ending because this shape can be used for so many different bugs. I'm going to color in his little bee face in black. You can color it in in yellow or something if you want to. This, it's a stinger, doesn't it? Well, he? Probably not a he. Keep calling him a he. She. Sorry. There we go. She needs a little stinger. She's looking cute. She's a little worker bee. Love that. Getting, getting things done. You know, making honey, taking names. So, she cutie. The best part is, though, we can totally use it for other things as well. Like, if you change the colors up, it's literally a completely different animal. So, if we do exactly the same thing, but we change up the colors. Okay, so, we're doing this fairly quickly, and thus these ones will not look quite as good. Uh, there we go. Poink. So, we do... Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. First one first. I'm the realist. Second thing second. We're going to color him in gray. Here we go. This one is a fly. <laughs> and you can draw some little kind of like veins off the back of their wings or something if you want to. It doesn't have to be that decorative. But this little guy is just a regular fly. Okay, you probably wouldn't put antenna on a regular fly. Do flies have antennas? I don't know. Typically, if I'm getting up close and personal with a fly, it's because I'm trying to shoo them out of my space. Uh, but you can also use this for a firefly, which is what I've done previously in my journal. So 
The Firefly looks pretty much exactly the same as a bee, in my opinion. Uh, can't confirm, probably looks nothing like a bee in real life. But I find that if you colour it in very similarly, and then instead of doing a stinger, this might be a bit bright, but instead of doing a stinger, you do kind of like little glow lines out the end of it. You can either do them in terms of just like stripes being like ding kind of a thing, or what I would probably be more inclined to do is um just some, not with this one, with a fine liner. Draw some kind of like curved lines coming out the end of it to be like, hey look, I've got a light up butt. So cute. We'll draw, bring you guys in a little closer, right? There we go. It looks like his butt has Wi-Fi, but that's fine. So very similar design, just slightly different coloration and it looks a little bit different. Now, the thing is like, these are very simple, right? I will be right back. I'm finding you an example. Now, which one were you in? Little cheeky boy. Okay. Because this is so simple, like it's, it's not, it's not very hard to do, which is nice. Um, it does mean that you give yourself more of an opportunity to do more effort on other parts of your layout, which is kind of nice, right? Gives yourself some more opportunity to spend your energy elsewhere. Okay. So for instance, this is a similar design to what I did for my fireflies, right? My fireflies, their heads were a little bit smaller. You can see, I also doubled up on their wings. So I didn't just do one wing, I did two. So if you want to kind of see what that looks like, it's a very small head and then wings, just like we did before with a little kind of heart and then duplicating them by drawing it in again underneath. Then we have the curved body like we had before and the little antennae. You color everything in, but once you've colored them in, you can also go and add in some more black lines, right? Like add in a little bit of extra detail just to add some like depth and dimension type of a thing. So if we do a similar thing to the one we had here, that's just adding a couple of little lines down the wings, add a little bit of depth maybe add a little kind of shadow on the body underneath the wings. And that just makes it look a little bit more detailed without a lot of hassle. Um, obviously this theme is not just fireflies by themselves. It's got kind of like blue in amongst them. Uh, this is one of my themes that I have loved the most. Like hands down, this is one of the best journal setup themes that I have ever done. I really enjoyed it, had a lot of fun with it, but also like, the fireflies themselves not too hard to do yeah um thank you i'm glad you like it as well so this one was a lot of fun but in terms of drawing the the little bugs not too hard if you wanted to draw say a ladybird instead uh or a ladybug um i don't know if they have different names other places uh what you can do for this one is instead of making your wings super curved, you make it kind of look like a Pac-Man. <laughs> so you know how Pac-Man is like, oh, does Pac-Man curve the whole way in? Pac-Man's kind of like this, isn't he? There we go. Simple doodle. Pac-Man or a piece of pie. Up to you. Or a piece of pie missing from a pie dish. Anywho. So a ladybird is effectively a similar kind of thing to this, except we would probably put the head like here type of the thing. So if this is the head, we want to draw a little triangle that comes out from that triangle we just curve on both sides and then you draw a little curve to connect it together the internal part of the body is black probably also has some little antenna which is cute and then you can color in the little shell in red now i do know that ladybirds actually have like i don't know proper wings underneath their shell we're not looking for realism here we're looking for cuteness. We're looking for cute and easy and, and approachable. So we'll add a couple of dots. Look at that. Boom. Done. Ladybird. So cute. Very simple. We love that for us. Look at all of our little bugs. So happy. I'd probably color in the ladybird's head as a, uh, like, well, just black, probably, honestly. Oh, so, so good. So cute. All right. Let's go see. Now that you've been using them a bit, how do you like the Ohuhu pens? I do quite like them. I haven't swatched them like, well, I have swatched them, but I haven't swatched them beyond when we first swatched them. When we first swatched them over here, I need to make sure I've turned my autofocus off, but I haven't done that yet. 
Um, oh gosh, where did it go? Oh, there it is. So I think that in terms of the, the colors, like they've got a pretty good range of colors. Like you've got quite a few pens here. I've got 160 pens. Um, I haven't really tested out to see if I have a lot of like kind of duplicate colors because I was just going and like chucking them down on the page. I will say that they don't seem quite as punchy as Tombows, but they're also way cheaper than Tombows. So it's like, you know, like it's not bad for, for the amount that you're paying for it, for the range of colors that you get. It's pretty, pretty damn decent. IMO. But um, yeah, I haven't played around with them so, so super much, but I do quite like them so far. And I like the fact that they've got a... Uh, What's the word? Fine liner on the other end. But yeah, anywho. Yes, it will be available on the channel on the live tab. You know, all of the live streams are always available. Unless, unless they're not, but usually they are. <laughs> like I've, I've, I don't think I've unlisted any live streams. Okay, that is actually, and yes, you can add it to my distraction counter, a total lie. The first live stream I ever did is unlisted. And that's because it was four minutes long and I was a nervous mess and I didn't want to keep it up. But yeah, <laughs> it's unlisted. It's still there somewhere. But anywho, yeah, kind of like looks like a lotus leaf, right? So what, little like a little lily, little lily pad type number type thing there. Color it in green. Looks, looks pretty cute. All right. Now I know that there were other requests for things and we're going to do a couple more. Let's see. <laughs> help me help me i'm poor uh, i'm gonna scroll back and see if i can find it let's see i have struggles <laughs> Alrighty, there we go okay so a rabbit a panda i'm gonna i'm just literally gonna write it down okay so we had a cat a rabbit a panda and stack of papers And then we did all the easy ones. So a ruler, a pencil, and a pen. Nice, gorge. Alrighty. Ooh, excellent. I'm glad that the Tombos were on sale for you. And a dragon. Alrighty. So I'm going to start by saying... I, I say start. We're three hours in. But I'm going to start by saying, just as a reminder, I am not what I would consider to be super great at drawing if I don't have some kind of like a uh, reference image for the most part. So for these ones, we are probably going to have to go and find a reference image because I am not very good also at drawing animals. Like I can draw them in the most general of sense so that you can kind of like get the vibe. But in terms of actually being able to see, uh, see yourself using it in your journal, maybe not so much, but we'll have a, we'll have a look at these. Theonyx. Theonyx? Phoenix, Phoenix. I had, uh, I've done that wrong, but hopefully you get what I meant. <laughs> Let's see. Yes, and and like and like um, Denise has said, there are so many really good doodle references. Uh, if you're looking for doodle references, okay. Let's 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 go and do a thing together. Let's go let's go do a little hunt. If we can figure out how to do that's business. I don't want to go to business. Okay, we're just gonna go with doodle tutorials there we go that makes it nice and easy so if we go to yeah so we've typed in like doodle tutorial all pins so this is for everything that's on there obviously you look at this and you're like okay this is a little overwhelming if you have something in particular you want to see you can put that in also doing step by step is usually a better bet because it usually gives you ones that like start with a very basic shape and show you how to like work your way through things if that kind of makes sense so like you know step by step easy doodles start with a circle add the semicircles on top add a couple more details like they usually take you through a little bit better so if you do step by step it's usually a lot easier <laughs> there we go so we're gonna we're gonna skadoodle out of that one though let's say cat in my mind a cat is if, if we're going with like super simple cat it's like a circle to start with and then two little triangles on either side for ears. Which is already starting to look like a devil face. If you want to make it a devil face, you go like this. But we don't want to make it a devil face. If you want to make it a devil cat, you then just have to add a nose. 
like this <laughs> and put in some whiskers. There we go. Devil cat. Okay, we probably don't want a devil cat though. So if we're not going for a devil cat, <laughs> we're going for something a little bit nicer. Let's see. I'm going to draw this in with a pencil first. So we're going to start with a, a circle for the face. And then we're going to draw in some slightly rounded triangles for ears. Once you have your rounded triangles for ears, then we can also put in a little nose, which is kind of like another little triangle that's like slightly rounded and points down. And we can curve out on either side, drawing a little butt like we had before, but that's the little cat mouth. Let's see. Then we're going to want some little kitty eyes, which we're going to draw as little circles. And a little kitty tongue. Most of the time, any time an animal has that kind of face that has like the kind of, I don't know how to describe it, the W, uh, the W face, I always want to draw a little tongue. Vogel scared me. He popped out of nowhere. All right, we're going to go and pen this in. We're going to start with the little nose because it's cute. Drawing the little W, w. Put in the little tongue. Has to have a little tongue for no reason. <laughs> yeah, the oh whoa instead of ooh woo. <laughs> and then little eyes. Okay, when it comes to little kitty eyes, you can do whatever you want. Um, so obviously we have like circles for eyes. You can do little, uh, no sleepy sleepy kitty eyes. You can do very large oval eyes type of a thing. I'm going to go with little circles because I've already drawn them in. And then I'm going to draw the ears in on either side. And then between the ears, I'm going to connect the circle. I'm not going to draw the circle all the way across the ears. You can if you want to. I just have decided that's not what I want to do today. Ugh, so cute. Okay. And because right now it's looking like a dog, we need to add whiskers. And that's usually I do whiskers in threes. And technically speaking, I think the whiskers actually come from like the the W, but I don't care. It's cute. It's cute like this. <laughs> Yay for Derpy Cat. All right. If you then want to go and color in your kitty so that then like uh, you can use color here effectively to, to show different kind of like types of cats. So you can do like a little like ginger kitty or a little tabby kitty or like whatever. I'm just going to add some orange on my kitty. A little orangey splotch kind of thing. There we go. A little orange splotch over the eye. A little calico kitty. A little orange splotch down here. Oh, so cute. Love it. Oh, that's in the red section. I'm trying to put the pens back so that they're roughly... Uh, in the right place. Yeah, see, it literally looks like a doge before you add the whiskers in, right? That's the thing. Dogs and cats are really not that different. <laughs> like, if you wanted to do this as a dog, you literally just leave the whiskers out and it's all good. Yep. Very cute. Little calico kitty. And then you would probably erase the pencil marks, but I'm going to make a mess if I do this. So, <laughs> there we go. Now it's a little smudge factory. Little smudge factory kitty. Make sure that whatever you're using for your doodles, um, that the pen and the paper are a good match. Obviously this is like slightly coated and this takes a little while to dry, thus little smudge city here. But it's fine because this is my scribble book, so I don't really matter. Alrighty, cat done. Rabbit? Hmm. Okay. Alrighty. I feel like I need to do another little sketchy thing. The cat's so fast it's almost a blur. It's got the zoomies. Zoomy cat. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So, rabbit. Um, how does one draw a rabbit? Let's go have a look. Excellent opportunity to try out our, um, what technique that we were doing before. Let's go see. So, if we do rabbit, uh, rabbit, rabbit, doodle, tutorial, done. Let's see, see what it, it says for us. Oh, oh, so cute. Right, so that's the thing. If you go and have a look at um, the tutorials online, you can usually find ones that are in a range of different styles and also quite easy, which is nice. So we are going to do... This one looks too hard. We're going to do this one. 
<laughs> okay, so I don't know what she has to do with rabbits, but she's here with us. So a circle and then two little circle eyes and then a little nose, a little W face, two little blush marks and then rabbit ears go up. Oh, super easy. We can totally do that. Alrighty. Yeah, it's a long-eared cat. It's literally every animal is the same. Don't even, don't even lie to me. So circular face which I've decided to do a squashed bunny face, but that's fine. Uh, and then we have the little circle eyes. And then the little nose. The little mouth. And then the ears, which go up. That looks pretty cute. Done. Easy. <laughs> Easy mode. All right. So, like we were saying, we are starting with the nose, a little triangle, we have the little W face, yep, squishy just means it's more fluffy, exactly, and I mean like you can also, when you draw this in, you can also draw like, we'll get to it in a second, um, you don't need to make it so smooth is what I'm effectively trying to say, so we're gonna do a little sleepy bunny, so we're just gonna draw little, little U's for eyes instead of O's, uh, and then when we get to the ears, we can go up and over. And then in the middle of those two, we can draw that part. Now, like we were saying before, you don't need to make them super, super smooth. You can add a little bit of like characteristic and fluff to them if you want, either with just like a little jagged edge around the outside. We can just draw like kind of some fluffy cheeks by doing a little kind of zigzaggy kind of line curve it down to the zigzaggy cheeks and then across these little chubs if you want to add in a little double chin you then just add in a little like uh additional line there to show that he has two chins very cute and like you said bunnies have whiskers do they hmm interesting i didn't know this long wispy ones okay <laughs> there we go big bunny whiskers <laughs> I do not have rabbits, uh, obviously. I have never had a rabbit. Um, but that's effectively what a rabbit looks like, I think. We, we are going to have to uh, raise the line so you can kind of see the differences of the faces. But it's very impressive how much you can change the look of a face just by either adding a, an element or... Um, or doing it slightly differently. So for instance, like the little tongue makes things look derpy. The little curve makes things look plush. Uh, the, the kind of like little closed eyes versus the kind of very awake eyes. There we go. Very awake eyes. All right, let's see, a little doge, a little doggy. Alrighty, we'll put doggy, doggy up there. Rabbit, done. Very cute. Your Dutch dwarf bunny had loads of them. Oh, that's cute. So big wispy kind of uh, whiskers for that one. Let's see. Dogs that have floppy ears. Let's go have a look. And by that I mean, where the heck is my pencil? So starting again, circular face. Um, Like we said, things that you can trial out doing a little differently. This one is a lot more of like a squashed oval type thing. This is a lot more circular. For this one, we're going to do... This kind of oval kind of deal. You guys said floppy ears, right? So dogs with floppy ears, the ears would come down. Like two little beans. Little bean shape. Little beano. And then I'll have a little... I'm going to make him a big nose. Big nose doggy. Little double new mouth. And a sticky outy tongue because it's a doggy and it needs to have a sticky outy tongue. And then in terms of the eyes, we're going to make very big eyes for this doggo. There we go. Cute! And I have this tendency pretty much always to start with the nose when I'm doing this. And then we can draw the little curve over. And the little tongue. There. <laughs> it looks pretty cute. Shaggy bangs in front of his eyes. Oh no, really? How does one draw that? Now he just looks moody. <laughs> <laughs> Toby approves of the dog. Well, I'm glad. Um, let's see. So, 
we're gonna want I'm gonna do the curved ear out this side and the curved ear out this side of course I'm, I'm finding it a little harder to describe these ones outside of the basic shapes but hopefully you can kind of see the process here <laughs> I don't know uh, because I know that some dogs do obviously have a lot of fluff in the front, but I've just made it look really moody with the way that I've done it. And just curve across. Big eyes. Big doggo eyes. There we go. Cutie. Big colour in the nose. I feel like it needs to be coloured in. And I'm going to add some dots to his little W face. I don't know why it's a he now, but it is. <laughs> I think it looks pretty cute. <laughs> like, it's not too bad. Of course, like, there's a lot of different styles of dogs that you could go with. Like, this is a floppy-eared doggo, whereas before we had effectively a doggo that turned into a cat with just three stripes on either side of its face. Um, and you can do different colours and stuff like that. I think this one looks pretty cute. I'm going to erase it and it's going to blur everything everywhere, but it still looks pretty. It looks pretty special. What a what a cutie pie. There we go. Not too shabby at all. I do like Demon Kitty best. Demon Kitty is still probably my fave. But Plump Bunny is actually looking very satisfied with himself. And that's kind of nice too. <laughs> Alrighty. So we reckon that we can draw a panda. And the panda is just a cat with rounded ears instead of... Uh, instead of uh what crisp what i'm gonna call crisp ears and then a koala is effectively like a bear with a very big nose eh so a much bigger nose let's see if we can do the panda without me drawing it in with pencil she lied i'm totally gonna do pencil ha 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 so i'm gonna do the panda with a quite circular face and then in terms of the ears they are going to be very much like little circles on either side little circles on either side and then we also need to have some bigger circles in the middle because pandas have black eyes and then a little little cute panda nose there we go that looks pretty cute i mean so far i think it does so little nose looking pretty swell little little w for the for the internal face looking pretty cute there are we too- we're not close enough, are we? I've zoomed you out again. I apologize. You can't- can't even see anything. Can't even see anything. There we go. And then that kind of like black O's. Now I will say that you can drastically change the way that your panda looks based on how you draw these rings. For instance, like circles. with an uwu face versus something that looks a little bit more like I'm going to try and draw this and it's going to end up bad like beans looks a little bit different eh looks a little bit like oh did I do that all right so coming back to this one we're also going to want to have some internal circles for the actual eyes themselves and then we're going to colour in around the outside. Around the outside, around the outside. There we go. Cute, 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 cute. Colour, 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 colour. Of course you don't have to colour it in now, you can colour it in at the end. Um, there's a little panda eyes watching you. <laughs> Urkel the panda, indeed. <laughs> And for this part in the back, we're going to do curve over and over. And the ears, I believe, are very black too. Yeah? The ears just look like C's. There you go. Little panda face. Of course, if you wanted to turn it into a derpy panda, you just have to add a little tongue. We're gonna color in the nose. There you go. That looks that looks better. That looks perfection. Perfection. Uh, can I erase this without smudging it to high hell? No, probably not. You know, I have a kneadable eraser. Do I know where it is? Absolutely not. But it's somewhere. <laughs> Try and roll it instead of because I don't want to smudge his little panda face. 
He's too cute for this. Gosh, my eraser is dirty. Ew. <laughs> there we go. Not too bad. Very sweet. So that is a panda. Done. Tick. Alrighty, we're gonna do we're gonna stick on the animal train here. So this is effectively like animals and stationary. Yeah. Uh koala. Koala doodle. That one, yeah, it's effectively just like a bear with a very big nose, isn't it? Koala. I need to go look at what a koala looks like. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, so yeah, koalas effectively just bears with bigger ears and bigger noses. In my mind. Because their nose looks kind of like egg shaped almost. So let's go see. We're going to need to do a. Okay. We talked about eye shape. Okay. Like how that can really change your face. We also vaguely talked about the shape of a um, like face shape in general. So, like we said, you can kind of do a circle or you could do kind of like a squashed oval. Or you could do like an elongated oval kind of a thing. You can also do ones that are a little bit more like egg shaped. So ones that are like smaller at the top uh, and wider at the bottom. That's also a possibility here. Um, and you can also do kind of any variation within that realm of stuff. For our koala, we're going to do a kind of like slightly egg shaped, but not 100% egg shaped. So it's going to be fairly oval-esque a little thinner at the top but wider at the bottom all right <laughs> i like it yeah they always end up looking like black and white pigs yeah fair i mean i did a panda theme in my journal and some of those pandas that so much erasing so much erasing so voila voila just slightly there we go slightly egg-shaped it kind of Kind of looks more like an onigiri, to be completely honest, but that's fine. Okay, so we start with the onigiri shape. And in terms of the ears of the koala, they are going to be quite large. Uh, so we're going to do big circles on the outside. And some smaller internal circles. That looks pretty good. Big circles. Um, then in terms of the nose, the nose, we need to figure out where his little face is going to go. His face is going to go here. But his nose is going to be quite large, but then also, again, kind of looks like a candy corn shape. Like, it's kind of pointed at the top. Uh, rather than every other nose we've done, pretty much, which has either been more, like, circular or it's been pointed at the bottom. Okay, so previous noses, we were doing this type of a deal in a variety of different kind of shapes. Whereas koalas, it's, like, the other way around. Yeah? <laughs> So it's, it, it can be like that kind of shape, that kind of shape. It could almost even be rectangular in a way. We're going to draw a uh, door. We're going to draw ours a little bit, a little bit triangulous, a little bit triangulous. Uh, and then little eyes. Okay. Other things that can change your face are the size and position of the eyes. So are the eyes like further apart, closer together? Are they smaller or bigger type of a thing? So if we think about like just a very simple simple face uh so like these eyes being as far apart with a very small smile that's very like kind of very close slightly under versus something that's a little bit like closer together like very different faces you know um still still got a smile but different positioning um, those are kind of things to think about in terms of the placement of elements on your face uh i'm, I'm gonna continue my, my little wala little wala moment here okay so starting with the nose because i like to so nice big on big old honking nose love him so cute little face little cheeky boy here it's looking pretty good i'm gonna draw little beady eyes because he's actually a drop bear he has fang okay we're not gonna draw fangs onto him yet <laughs> But uh, from here, I'm going to draw the outside of the head. We're going to pretend that his ears are kind of behind him. Looks pretty cute. Now, when it comes to the ears, we could keep them very kind of smooth, like we had before. Or we could make them a little bit shaggy. If you're going to make shaggy ears, because, I don't know, koalas just look like they have fluffy ears, right? Um, typically, I will draw straight from 
the out of the top that was words straight out from the top and then cut back okay so straight out like we've got here and then cut back a little bit hopefully you can see what I mean and then from there we will curve back around curve back around like we were and then cut back a little bit cut back a little bit and just do that a couple of times as you work your way around so curve out like we said curve out and then cut back Curve out, curve out, and then cut back. And that cut back does not need to be big, alright, just a little bit. And then curve out, curve out, cut back, cut back, curve out, curve out, and cut back. And once you get to the end, you can just curve all the way into the middle. Done. Okay? So it's just like a little bit, a little bit shaggy, a little bit, a little bit fluffy, okay? Look, looks pretty cute okay um from here we're gonna also just draw an internal line which is effectively just like a c kind of shape or a backward c depending on which side you're on and then you can go color it in to to look however you want you can add maybe a little bit of like shine or reflection off his nose if you want to just by putting on a little little white patch while you color in the rest looks pretty cute so from here like we said before, there are a lot of different ways to kind of change a face. Uh, you could add in uh, eyebrows. Eyebrows are huge for, for being able to kind of convey emotion. So for instance, like we had before with Demon Kitty, if you draw eyebrows that slant into the middle on that kind of an angle um, with a smile, then it is, it's looking mischievous, looking a little, looking a little snesky. Um, whereas if you draw something like, let's say, we're just going to draw a bunch of eyes out. go a bunch of eyes a bunch of eyes to, to make the point okay so if you have a happy face but give it eyes that slant inwards like this now it's cheeky mischievous alrighty looking a little snesky if you have a sad face but then give it the eyebrows now he's pissed all right he's angry and if you have a sad face that you want to like really make look more sad, you do the eyebrows slanting out this way. Wah! <laughs> kind of thing. Whereas if you do the same but with a smile, you look a little bit uneasy, a little bit unsure. All right, so eyebrows can, can change a lot. If you want to look a little bit puzzled, hmm? Whereas if you're just like a meh kind of face, Again, a little bit unsure versus a little bit unimpressed. <laughs> so eyebrows can do a lot for, for a face. For this guy, we're just going to give him some, some friendly looking eyebrows. And you can give him a double chin if you want by just adding a little line at the bottom. Very cute. Alrighty, not too bad. So, voila, done. Can I draw a dragon? <laughs> In my mind, a dragon has like... A strong chin and kind of looks like a horse but a horse with like a snout you know isn't that what a dragon looks like but then with like horns I can't draw a dragon very well but that looks like a dragon to me but it's also like it's just a demon horse as well that's what it, that's what a dragon is it's a demon horse <laughs> there we go it needs teeth right That's kind of dragonish. <laughs> like, I don't actually know how to draw a dragon, so again, let's let's go and let's go have a snoop. Yeah, it's very dragon horse because effectively, if you just take the same idea, you give it the strong draw, and then you draw it down, and you just make it a little bit softer. Nay, then you have a horse, and then with horse hair, like mane or whatever horse hair. There we go, done. And then if you give it a horn. Now it's a unicorn. <laughs> I don't know where the horse's eye goes though, so we're just gonna put it here and be like, what the heck? What are you doing? This isn't right. There are the horse's ears. Done. It's a horse. 
<laughs> okay, okay. For reference, all right. When I was a kid, I used to borrow drawing books out from the library, or I think maybe my mum got me some, or like something like that. And I had a couple that literally said, a dragon looks like a, a horse crossed with a snake. Like, that is what a dragon is. So now anytime I want to draw a dragon, I, I effectively just draw a horse and then make it look suggestive. I don't know if this looks suggestive to me. <laughs> so let's go have a look. Dragon drawing tutorials so that I can draw one that looks more like a thing that is a little bit more viable. Okay. That's pretty cute. We're going to go with this one. So we're going to start with a pencil <laughs> because pencil right is the best. <laughs> suggestive dragon. What? There we go. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> I've been really trying, babe. Anyways, moving on. So, back to back to the matter at hand here. We are going to <laughs> the dragon is a horse with plants. I love that. This is gonna be tricky. Okay, we're gonna draw a circle and a oval that comes off the circle. And a triangle that comes off that, like roughly. There we go. That looks about right, okay? In my mind it looks a little bit a little bit suspicious. It needs to be a bigger oval. There we go. Better. Bigger. Better. Bigger. And we're gonna want a a mouth of some description just gonna be two little ovals together kind of looks like a duck not mad about it though all right and we're gonna draw some little circles like little fro little bits down the side here looking cute looking cute all right just trust me on the process okay this is gonna be tricky like <laughs> because this is no longer in simple doodle t territory for Jess this is in like struggle bus is real kind of territory but that's fine okay so it looks like a duck, but it's going to be better. I promise you. So we're going to draw another little oval off the bottom here. And another oval off the bottom here. There we go. Cute. I love that. And it's going to need a little arm. So its little arm is going to go here. That looks that looks about right. That looks cute. Hmm. And a little circle for its eye. And... It needs a wing, doesn't it? Okay little curve and it goes back like that and it comes back over like this there we go that looks right i know that this is not very descriptive because again i uh am not super familiar with this yes it's a hundred percent a t-rex dragon it's a dragon that looks kind of like a t-rex chicken um we're gonna go in and we're gonna draw the actual kind of parts and features in now so we're gonna start with a snout because that seems to be the part that i like to start with so, I'm going to curve up, and it's going to curve down, like this. That, to me, looks like a dragon face. <laughs> yeah, it's like a chibi-style dragon thing. And then it's going to curve back. It needs horns, doesn't it? Does a dragon need horns? In my mind, a dragon has horns. I feel like I need to pencil in horns if I'm going to draw horns. So that needs to come, like, out and over. There we go. That looks kind of horn, horn-ish. Horn-ish. See, everything else we've drawn so far today I feel like was much more approachable. This is, is a little bit more vicious because it's a dragon. But also it's just harder. And we're going to curve it. I'm going to draw little spikes going down. Down its little back. When you draw the wing in. Okay, there we go. Again, I know I'm not really explaining this because I'm just kind of making it up as I go along uh, to try and make it so that it looks like a thing. And then his little tail there. Okay, he's a little bit chubs, but he's pretty cute. And I like him for it. There we go, there's his little face. And again, he's evil. <laughs> so we're going to draw that in. Like, Let's see. Um, and he's going to need a tooth. A little tooth. There we go, because he's... He's got his means business. He's off to go like slay a village or something. I don't know. Do dragons slay villages? Slay. Yeah. Okay. That looks cute. 
and then the tail is going to curve around his leg so we need to kind of like draw his leg in his leg in here <laughs> he doesn't have leggings but this is little leg <laughs> which is very person looking <laughs> like for a dragon but whatever it doesn't matter there we go little dragon arm again he probably could use a diet but it's fine i wonder if he can actually fly with his wing that's cool he's looking pretty cute and then he's gonna curve around here because he's got a little little underbelly little underbelly we'll draw a little striped on his underbelly there we go that looks kind of like a thing similar ish to what a dragon would probably exactly look like don't be fooled this is a dragon there we go his wings are flapping these are these are action lines i think it counts <laughs> I think he looks a little special, but that's okay. <laughs> it's all right. There's his other leg. There we go. Three-dimensional dragon here. Oh, dear. You think a longer tail would mitigate the, the, the chicken look? Yeah, probably. If we drew, a little, uh, like, a tail that kind of, like, came out a little bit further. There we go. There's his serpentine-looking tail. There we go. He has a longer tail now. <laughs> like, he's pretty cute. He's 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 special, but he's pretty cute. Um, let's see. We're trying to raise the pencil lines. We're going to end up making a mess here, but that's okay. Again, he he is faster than the wind. <laughs> so he he has a lot of mess. <laughs> he's he's stuck in a storm. <laughs> like, give him some color, but only a little bit of color because we don't want to make too much of a mess of my pens. There we go. Cute. Now, if anybody's gotten to this point in the the uh, video, either here live or on the replay, and you're like, Jess, what the actual loving heck? You said that these were easy doodles. Just know that I did not come into this video expecting to have to draw a dragon. So I apologize. <laughs> there we go. That looks pretty cute. I'm drawing some green on his wings too. There we go. Beaut. Beautiful. So cute, so cute. Then we clean off our pen so that we don't Oof, muddy, makes a mess. Ta-da! <laughs> I'm glad he is speed. <laughs> That's right, he is grace. <laughs> I feel like he needs some stripes on his. Now, if you're wondering, because again, I am not the person who, uh, the person who can draw this type of thing. He has come from a tutorial in particular this is the link to his tutorial. I will say that I think ours looks, personally, I might, I might be biased, ours just looks better. But at the same time, the uh, the step-by-step -step on that was much more helpful <laughs> than me trying to explain it to you. So that's looking pretty cute. Other ones that we had on our list were a phoenix, which I don't know what a phoenix looks like. It's a bird, right? Birds are not just a strong point. I mean, dragons obviously are, but <laughs> bof. <laughs> you're cute. You're friendly. You're not what I would put in my journal, but you're cute. Not as cute as Suggestive Drag, <laughs> as opposed to Confused Horse. <laughs> okay, Phoenix. Phoenix and a stack of papers. See, when you say a stack of papers, I'm not too sure what you mean by that, because in my mind, a stack of papers would just be like... Like a box with lines in it. Kind of a thing where maybe one or two kind of like hangs off the edge but i don't know if that's quite what you mean by it uh so i think that possibly we would be better to look elsewhere on the internet for that one but your sister-in-law painted you a couple of amazing phoenixes that's pretty cool because yeah phoenixes are some people do amazing work with phoenixes um so I, I'm not too sure if I'm going to be able to live up to the hype. Let's see if we can find a, an example of a phoenix that doesn't look like it'll make me want to do cry. Make me want to do cries. So oftentimes I find the, 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 the most impressive phoenixes are the ones with the tails. Well, do I most phoenixes have tails? But um, like where their wings are kind of up. I'm gonna I'm gonna sketch what what I what I'm talking about. All right. Uh, let's see. 
Am I scroll scroll in? Scroll in. <laughs> You're voting for other ideas to stress me out. So mean. So in my mind, phoenixes that like kind of their wings like come up and then out. Like that. And then obviously curves down. Like this. That was bad. I can obviously do this easier on one side compared to the other. Uh, do I know what a phoenix's face looks like? No. So we're just going to draw it in like this. There we go. And then, um, like, it has, like, feet. <laughs> Talons. <laughs> feet. There we go. That's the, that's the bird's foot. Don't be fooled. Um, he looks a little bit plump, but that's fine. Doesn't matter. Uh, comes around here. And then the tail, like, comes out. Like that. In, in a very impressive swoosh. That's what, in my mind, a phoenix kind of looks like. This looks a little bit odd, but hopefully you get the vibe. Also, he has to be on fire, so we need fire colors. <laughs> there we go. Fire. Fire. Fire, fire. Phoenixes are on fire, right? That's like a whole thing. Obviously, you can tell that I don't actually know what color these pens are because I'm just picking them up at random and they're not quite what I want, but fire. I need like a proper orange, but alas, all I got was this salmon. There we go. Nee, 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 nee. There's the fire. I feel like it needs yellow. <laughs> don't be mean. Feet. <laughs> like, I know you're not actually being mean to me. I'm just being silly. There we go. That looks like that looks like Phoenix Fire to me. This is Jess's not so much tutorial, quick tutorial of, of drawing a Phoenix. That's what it looks like, right? And then you draw like kind of swoopy color. Swoopy color with like your pen markers and stuff out of here. Hoopa, hoopa. I think it looks great. Don't be fooled. This is actually a fire chicken. Huzzah. <laughs> So, okay, what we need to do, I think, instead of doing a um, Jess actually gives you genuine information, is more of a, like, you give Jess things that actually suck to draw, and she's just going to try and draw them from memory, and they're all going to look like a mess. It's like when people try and draw Pokemon from memory. Yeah, it'd be like that. <laughs> if you think we should do one of those, then you should give this video a thumbs up. Um, this has been a lot of fun. Hopefully, at least some of the ideas were helpful, even if not the fire chicken. I mean, you know, well, see, again, Jess doesn't know which direction that she needs to zoom to get, get things done. But, uh, yeah, fire chicken bok bok. <laughs> right? That's their name, bok bok the fire chicken. <laughs> so we had decorative boxes, much more reasonable, much more doable uh, stuff that is, is a lot more approachable, I think. We had some book doodles because books are fun, books are easy, a lot of rectangles, which we really love. We had a couple of different botanical-esque kind of designs that you can use, which are all fairly approachable as well, including the sad, lonely daisy, all goods. And then we had an eclectic bunch of mainly animals, some which looked better than others, some which were bok bok the fire chicken. <laughs> Alrighty team, have a fabulous rest of your day. Thank you for being here with me. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you want to see a part two of some description and I will talk to you next time. <laughs>